Billy didn't want to get you flowers because he's like, flowers die, and then you'll think you're dead dad. Yeah. That's what yeah. he told us. And we're like, no, that's, oh, that's, okay. <laughs> that's that's exactly what I was saying. It's like you can't here's, – here's one thing that won't die. It's a cat. It also reminded me of what a little prick Billy is. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say because I told him on today's part of my take, we have NFL Draft Week. Peter Schrager joins us to talk about the draft, what he's hearing, front offices. We're also going to have Daniel Jeremiah and Todd McShay on on Wednesday. So we're loaded for draft week for everyone. We're also going to talk NBA playoffs, Dylan Brooks, the Warriors surviving, some hockey playoffs, the Islanders dead, dead. Yeah, memes just said a fuck silently. Uh, Who's back of the week? And, of course, the Lottery Ball Machine. Before we do all of that, Game Time, the exclusive ticketing partner of Barstool Sports, created by fans for fans. Game Time is a ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last-minute deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows, and they guarantee the lowest price. I went to the Mecca on Friday night because of Game Time, saw the Knicks versus Cavs Game 3 electric environment. Max, you were at Sixers Nets, correct? Correct. I was there Thursday and Saturday. Great Game Time seats. Great game time seats. They got us some great seats in the Mecca. If you're looking for uh, the tickets for MLB games, NHL playoffs, NBA playoffs, concerts, maybe uh, I know what Billy Joel at the Mecca all the time, summer concerts coming up. It's going to be great. Dead and company out there. So game time app is the place to go. It's possible with the game time app. The biggest last minute price drops can be found on the seats you thought you could never buy. The purchase process takes just two taps, 10 seconds, and once you buy your tickets, they're delivered directly to your phone. No printer needed. The app also allows you to easily share tickets with friends via text so you can get into the game seamlessly. Skip the hassle. Enjoy the moment. Go with Game Time. Download the Game Time app or go to the website, enter your email, and redeem code PMT for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply using code PMT for $20 off. Your first purchase. Thank you to Game Time, the exclusive ticketing partner of Barstool Sports. Okay, let's go. Welcome to part of my take. Today is Monday, April 24th, and Dylan Brooks touched LeBron James' penis. He touched his mm. penis, PFT. Right in the penis. Right, right in the, the penis. Yeah, but he's a villain. He got over penalized because he's he's a villain now, according to Dylan Brooks. He just kind of like made himself a villain. He just said, you know what? I, I feel like becoming a villain this postseason. So he's kind of following his uh he's called his shot and then he's following up on it. And uh yeah, he went he went right at him. That seemed like that was definitely intentional, right? Yeah, it was. You can't touch another man's penis. I just like calling it penis. I, I use that as a caption and everyone was like, What the fuck? Why'd you it is one of those things that, you know, when, when you get a when someone hits someone in the dick, you say dick, but when you say penis, it sounds like something way more egregious. Like he touched LeBron yeah. James's penis. He did, he did. It was sus as hell. And uh I actually you could make the argument that since Dylan Brooks doesn't think that LeBron James is a man, he didn't know that he was going to hit him in the penis. He was trying to hit him in the labia. Yes, but yes. But he missed and yes. made contact with his dick. Uh, so Dylan Brooks, you just said it, but I'll, I'll say it even uh, with more of my chest. Dylan Brooks is an all-time fraud. He is a fraud. He's a fake tough guy. His quote afterwards, so he, he did two things. One, well, he did three things. He hit LeBron James in the penis. Then he got ejected and... Afterwards, said he didn't want to talk to the media. Then in shoot around on Saturday, Sunday, he said uh, the media make is making me a villain. The fans making me a villain. That just creates another persona on me. Talking about his flagrant two uh, call in game three, dude. You did all of this. You decided that you wanted to be a villain. You have been wearing like you know you you dress as like Stone Cold Steve Austin one game you know in the regular season. You are an agitator. You told LeBron James he's old. You said you don't respect him until he puts 40 on him. Draymond Green, whatever you want to say about him, at least backs up everything he says. Pat Beverly backs up what he has to say. Dylan Brooks, basically the first sign of things like, oh, maybe I'm, maybe people don't like me. He folded and was like, it's all your guys' fault. It's none of my fault. Fuck that. You are the reason why we think you're a villain, which I like, by the way, because I like sports having villains. But you have to at least... 
own up to the fact that not only did you touch LeBron James in the penis, but you also shot your team out. They scored nine points in the first quarter. Dylan Brooks went three for 13 in 19 minutes of game time. He's not a shooter, and he was like, I'm going to try to win this game myself. Dylan Brooks, like, say, with dude, just fucking stand up for yourself and be like, yeah, I, I touched his penis, and next game, I'm going to make sure he he scores less than 20 or something like that. It, lean into it. You are a complete fraud when it comes to this stuff. Next time, touch his penis more than once. Yeah. Keep it. It t- keep touching it till it gets hard. That's how I'll know that you're about that life. Dylan yeah. Brooks, be a man about it. Dylan Brooks, he's you're right. He's tried too hard to become a villain, and now he's he's running away from the villain reputation because it's penalizing him. If you're a real villain like Draymond, you get penalized for being a villain, and you love it. You love that shit. Right. He doesn't. He's not. You can't. You can't. Ju- also, you can't just say like I'm a villain now. That's too. It's you have to demonstrate a body of work to become a villain. And he hasn't done that yet. He ha- he's not he's not built up the rap sheet necessary to become a true villain. Like it's if if Jake said that he was a villain because he repeatedly beats Hank at golf over and over and over again, then I'll buy that. But you can't just say it like one time because he beat him one time at golf. Right. 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 Hank? Right. Right. Exactly. Right. So you you yeah. admit Jake beats you over and over. Yeah. Has he ever touched See, your penis? No. Okay. You had to pause there for Wait. a second. Wait, well, I touched his did penis, touch penis last year. Uh, oh, yeah, you did. You oh, touched yeah, his penis. Oh, yeah, that hurt. Yeah, you touched oh, his penis. God. Yeah, so yeah. Dylan Brooks, I mean, the Grizzlies, I didn't think they had a shot in that game just because you poked the bear, you poked LeBron James, but then coming out and scoring nine points in the first quarter, was that the lowest? That was the lowest in a playoff game, right? Uh, nine points in the first quarter. The, we talked about it a couple weeks ago, the biggest, like, margins and how they're not all created equally. 35-9 to nine was game over. That was the largest margin I've ever seen on a basketball court after the first quarter. And I LeBron, he didn't put up 40, so I guess like that's what Dylan Brooks should have said. He'd been like, I'll talk to the media. Okay, let me see. Did LeBron put 40? No? Okay, still don't respect him. Do that. Well, because because Dylan got kicked out of the game. So then LeBron's like, I don't need to put 40 on him anymore. This well, guy's he, already out of here. He wasn't if he, he played- wasn't scoring 40 anyway. He was at like maybe 18 points when it happened. Not, but he even still less. Could've. He could have. He could have. But still, he, like lean into it and say that LeBron didn't score forty, and so yeah, they won. But you don't respect him. Have you heard this one, Big Cat? Have you heard about this one? He said Dylan Brooks said that he wanted to play Cleveland or Miami LeBron, but he ended up playing Bangkok LeBron. Oh, nice. Did you hear Good about one. that one? That's a great one. Celtics scored seven points uh, in a first quarter. Oh, you you just looked it up because it triggered something in your memory, didn't it? Yeah. When was that? Uh, Isaiah Thomas era against the Hawks. Oh, Jesus Christ. Mm. Seven is in a first quarter? In a first quarter. Because that's the thing is if it happens in a third quarter, it doesn't matter because you're looking at the score and it's like, oh, they have 48 points or something. But in the first quarter, when it just sits out there, it's brutal. Yeah, you, if it happens in the third quarter, it's like, well, they, they went on a huge run in the third. Yeah. But if it happens at the, at the start of the game, it's like, well, this game's over already. It, either way, that game... Uh, Lakers, we knew, like, Anthony Davis played pissed off because he got embarrassed in game two. And then we had John Morant just go absolutely nuclear in the fourth quarter. And I was sitting there being like, yeah, maybe if Dylan Brooks didn't shoot 13 times in 19 minutes and your best player, you know, had the ball a little bit more, you, the Grizzlies might have been in this game because he was sensational. I think he ended up with, like, 45. He scored, like, 20 in the fourth, I think. So it was uh, – I this series is fun, though. I, I hope that Dylan Brooks – stops being a pussy and starts just being a villain again and not being like, woe is me. He actually, he reverse psyched out himself by telling LeBron, like, you got to give, he's got to give me 40. He made himself try to go out there and give LeBron 40. Right. That's, that's the mindset that he was in, which is, that's how, you know, he's not about that life really. Yes. Um, and shout out by the way, the, uh, the court crew at, at, is it crypto now? Not staples anymore. Crypto. Uh, the fact that Clippers and the Lakers had a home game on the same day blew my mind in a playoffs. Like, I, I think they might do it uh, regular season, but like playoffs, is a lot of stakes. Like what if you, what if you put one of the floorboards in wrong? LeBron gets hurt. Can't yeah, have that. We're stuff. watching the I, LA Kings right now. Yeah. And we're watching. Yeah. They had four yeah. playoff games in like 48 hours. Do we get a sick ass time lapse video of the, of the yeah. floor becoming ice? It was awesome. It was. You it know was that's my cool. that's my favorite part of the postseason is when they do those time lapses. It's incredible. No, we with the the sick sick uh, time lapse was the Clippers going to the Lakers as quickly as possible. 
because it was oh. it was literally like three hours in between both games. I've never even heard of that time lapse. Yeah, it was awesome. I, I when I realized the Clippers and Lakers were both playing home games on the same day, I was like, just give me the time lapse. Let's just go to the time lapse. And it was it. Yeah, it delivered. It absolutely delivered. Um, okay, let's talk some other games. We should talk about uh, Max, your Sixers take take care of business, clean sweep of the Nets. Uh, should we do the hurt or injured by Morgan and Morgan, America's number one law firm? Is Joel Embiid hurt or injured? I uh, he's hurt. It's just it's just he's hurt. You said he wasn't though. No, I mean if if we're if I'm choosing between hurt or injured, I'm going I'm going with hurt. Hurt. Okay, PFT. What do you think? I think he's he's always hurt. So this means because he's extra hurt, he's injured now. Yeah, aren't the playoffs about playing hurt? He's yeah. and he would have I th- he would have played if it if it wasn't a meaningless game. Did have you guys have the Sixers thought about maybe like telling Joel Embiid the season starts like January first because it does feel like every year we get to exactly this point in the calendar and he gets hurt. Yeah, I mean he was pretty he was pretty much healthy all year. Timing well, you got is, the MVP. Timing, timing yeah. is unfortunate. Yeah, he got the MVP. Yeah, timing's unfortunate, but we'll have a week to get ready for the next series. Could be the Hawks. Who knows? Um, and he'll be ready to go. I know Doc's given the whole 50 50 that, that he's going to play. He's not going to play. He's going to fucking play. Well, if he doesn't play, B ball Paul was awesome. True. Paul, double double. Uh, go buy the shirts, by the way. We were, we're actually collabing with B ball Paul. So we have shirts in the Barstool store with B ball Paul. Um, other things from this game was dense. Uh, Spencer D- Din Shitty finishes the season 0 and 4. After being called Spencer uh, Din Shitty, that's uh, he's never he may never win a game again. PFT. Yeah, it, that's one of those where if if you watch if I watch Spencer Dinwiddie play, I'm like this guy's pretty good. He he's he he uh, takes a lot of shots, and he's the focal point of that offense at times. But if you actually play with him, you realize like this dude, we cannot win with this guy. Yeah, he's Spencer Din Shitty. I also have a quote for you that. Uh, I'd love for you to to take a guess who said uh, the quote is watching my team get swept hurt and I don't don't ever want to feel that way again. Hmm. I'm going to say watching my team get swept hurt and I don't want to ever feel that way again. I am going to go with Rob Thompson. Okay. It was Ben Simmons and he said it. I fucked up. I was thinking baseball, so I I went to the Phillies. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, It it was Ben Simmons. He said it in 2020, and since that quote, he's watched his team get swept two out of the last three years. Well, he only watched two of the sweeps this time because he didn't go on the road and watch the games in Philadelphia. Yeah. Well, no, but he saw saw this one. Yeah, live, because the the sweep technically happened in front of him. Yeah, yeah, the the last game did. I'm curious, Max, were you close enough to throw something at Ben Simmons? Um, no. I it's just it's the perfect quote because literally he was like, "Yeah, I don't I, like trying to pump himself up like I don't ever want to be back here." And now he's watched two teams in back-to-back years of his get swept. You know what a good way for him to pre- prevent that would be is if he played. Yeah. Maybe they could have probably pretty used simple them. fix. They probably could have used. Oh, you don't think he would have had a difference? He sucks. He wasn't even getting. He wasn't even getting time when he was healthy. Who is your favorite player on the on the Sixers right now? Is it Tyrese Maxey? Yeah, easy. Yeah, he's been awesome. He's my guy. I mean, he's he's also so fun and such like a personable guy, and he's so good. He's so fast. He's so strong. So, <laughs> <laughs> he's so yeah. strong. What else? His hair smells good. I bet it does. Yeah, he's the best. Yeah. You're, great you're, smile. Great, great smile. smile. <laughs> great smile. Uh, yeah, so the Nets are done. Thank God that we could just get rid of them. I don't – there's nothing really – nothing to say about the Nets. I don't even know – like, a, like I, do you, how many Nets fans right now are just watching the Knicks and being like, fuck, I really should have just I, – I should have just been a Knicks fan. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that the Nets have to root for now is like ho- just hoping maybe KD gets the Suns lose the first series somehow. Yeah, some way. And the, and the Knicks somehow like blow a three one lead to Cleveland. Yeah, they need a double three one lead blown right now. Um. All right. So the Knicks Cavs. Let, let's talk about. It. I went to the game on Friday night. The Mecca was electric. Uh, I got on side talk PFT. The uh the you know the the guys who interview people after games. The Bing Bong, 
and everything. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they'll ever put my clip in. I just hushed the whole entire crowd. And then I was like, I don't give a fuck about the Knicks, but I just hit my nuclear warhead missile play. Um, and then everyone lost it. Cause I think you, it's, it was a great setting because you could say literally anything and everyone will go crazy. Mm -hmm. Like you, you could just be like, fuck the Pope. And everyone would be like, Oh shit. That was awesome. It was, it was a great audience. People in New York lose their mind over the Knicks, which I love. I, I hope they I, I hope they keep going through the playoffs because I just want to spend time. Uh, I'll take the traffic jams outside MSG. It's just good to see the city pretend to be happy about something for a little bit. I actually bet you like the the mayor approval rating goes up when the Knicks are winning in the playoffs. Like every and they would have fucking loved De Blasio. That's that's the problem with De Blasio. Everyone hated him, but maybe if the teams won occasionally. They would be like, you know, this guy's a pretty fucking good mayor. Things yeah. are going pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. It was um I this series is like I don't understand the Cavs. They can't rebound, even though they have Evan Mobley and Jared Allen. And the Knicks like Julius Randle has just been garbage. And the Knicks still look so much better than them, which if you're a Knicks fan, you're probably saying to yourself if Julius Randle isn't I think he's he scored seven points today. He even watching him on Friday night, he loves doing the spin move and then missing threes. That's like his two favorite things to do. And the Knicks are winning without him playing well. And it's all thanks to Jalen Brunson and Josh Hart, who I Josh Hart was awesome today. I saw a video and Josh Hart has to play well because Josh Hart went on JJ Reddick and Tommy Alter's podcast. And then they did a shoot around after JJ Reddick's eight year old son beat Josh Hart in a three point contest. That rocks. Yeah. So he's got a. How like, is that possible? It was crazy. His son I don't, got wet. I, it I, was nuts. I, I fully believe that JJ Reddick's son could be. Yeah, I mean, NBA if anyone's right son now. could be that good, but eight years old, I feel like NBA players don't miss if there's no defense. I, I was. I watched the video. It it wasn't. They weren't NBA threes, so maybe he could be like, uh, oh, I don't. But it was crazy. An eight year old. Were they playing? Was he playing with a regulation ball? Yeah, regulation ball. He said some. He mumbled something about how he had just played the day before and had to guard Jamal Murray but it's like dude he's eight he's eight years old that rocks that rocks so hard so uh full disclosure I didn't get a chance to watch this game on Friday uh dealing with other stuff uh same thing with with the most recent game but I did watch an electric highlight of the game which was Donovan Mitchell missing another three-pointer yeah uh I think he went he went like what 0 for 9 at one point he just kept shooting and he kept missing and the crowd just kept cheering louder and louder with every single miss that he had. He had, they, he, they were all, yeah, he had an air ball on Friday night, like a true old fashioned air ball, like yeah. just missed and, the whole whole, like not like a like maybe oh maybe there was someone close that maybe like tipped it. It was just missed the whole fucking thing. There's something about a crowd that I absolutely love when they cheer harder for their opponent's demise than they do for their own victories at times. And it, it, it felt like the crowd was catching fire every time he missed a shot. So that that was awesome. I'd also like to put my hand up because I, I made a lot of fun of the New York Knicks and their fans when they were going all in on Brunson. And they were acting like Brunson was about to be their their savior this offseason because they didn't hit on like the two first guys that they were going after right when free agency started. And I was like, oh, you guys are settling on Brunson right now. Uh, yeah, like that guy's going to get you guys some playoff wins. I was wrong. Hand up. Man enough to admit it. I was very wrong. I'd like to apologize to the entire city of New York. Well, You're that's welcome. that's the funniest part about them going after Donovan Mitchell is that's who they wanted, too. Yeah. They wanted Donovan Mitchell. He's from New York, and they were like, yeah, Donovan Mitchell. Jalen Brunson is incredible. I love, like, he his game is just so old school, and every, every 10, 12-footer is like a layup for him. And also, we should say, R.J. Barrett, who has been – pretty much maligned I'd say because he signed a big deal and has not lived up to it has like played very well in this series so the Knicks they're fun that crowd was w one of like the top crowds I've, I've been a part of like it was loud from the first tip all the way through the game just very into the game it was it was good to see the Knicks like good again yeah, I've been to a few games at, at MSG. Uh, I don't think I've been to a Nick game there. I've been to a bunch of Rangers games there. But every time they do the the celebrity camera in the audience, every time I've been there, Christopher Maloney from Law & Order, that's like the first guy that they show. And the pop that guy gets is fucking intense. Yeah, big time. I think, I'm think i trying to think who it was. Justin Tuck, uh, Fat Joe did a concert at, at halftime. That ruled. Um, I'm 
I'm trying to think who else was Chris there. Christie's always mulling around there, clogging up the aisles. Yeah. The I feel like the Sunday the Sunday afternoon game brings out all the stars because they like Ben Stiller was there today. Uh, there was a bunch of people. Yeah, they, Pete Davidson. Yeah, Pete Davidson. They 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 pack it. And it was it was an awesome crowd. Like I have to admit, it was a fucking. I got there like maybe twenty minutes early, and there was a couple dudes. I was doing the game time ad read. There were these two g- dudes who looked like they had been sitting there for like five hours just drinking beers, like like thirteen dollar beers, just getting ready because they like one of them came over to ask for a picture and he almost fell down all the steps. <laughs> and this was before the game, and I was like, "Good job, guys! Like this is yeah, this is what playoff basketball should be about." No, it's such a flex to get drunk on fifteen dollar beers. Yes, yes. Uh okay. Other series. I the Clippers Suns, all I have is that Russell Wils- Russell Westbrook is the real winner. He's like I can't believe that we're at a point where we're watching a playoff series and we're saying, like, could you imagine how bad the Clippers would be if they didn't have Russell Westbrook? He he's just trying so hard and actually playing well while Kawhi and Paul George sit on the bench and the Clippers dream team is they're they're in the running for like biggest bust of a dream pairing ever, right? Yeah, I mean, just considering that neither one has really played together like they haven't played together as a unit, especially in the postseason. So right. um yeah, I mean I just I, I felt like it was a good team that they were assembling because like Kawhi, how can you miss with Kawhi? He's proven that he can he can like be a superstar in the playoffs he's played on some bad teams that he was like still motivated to play on at times before his his uh, mysterious quad injury on the spurs it felt like this was a good move for the clippers um but yeah it's got to be it's got to be super super disappointing and now he's probably going to be out i i it wouldn't surprise me if he was out for the rest of the series if he if he missed the next game yeah i mean it's just one more game most likely and it's also the, but you do have a good excuse though at the same time if you're a clippers fan you have the, you have the injured excuse. You have the Kawhi got injured excuse, and, which is always it's good to have, and that's what really Clippers fans have been great at having uh, throughout their long storied playoff history. Um, but it's it's always good to be able to be like, if Kawhi had played, we win that series. Yeah, I mushed him when I said that he was a face of load, uh, load management, and then hasn't played since. I also there is a certain some franchises are just cursed, like. The Vikings are cursed, right? There's there's different I mean the Cubs were cursed for a hundred years, right? The Clippers are cursed. Because if you told a Clippers fan that we would be in the year twenty twenty three and you would have had Kawhi Leonard and Paul George sign with your team and Chris Paul, who's thirty eight years old, is hitting big shots in the fourth quarter to like put another you know, to to end your team and end your season, they'd be like, well, How'd this happen? You know what I mean? Like that Chris Paul what it, best Clipper of all time, probably. I don't know. I I don't know the whole history of the Blake. Clippers. Blake, Blake and Chris Paul. Blake is my Baron vote. Davis. Baron Davis. But you and he did it a couple of years ago or whatever it was. Yeah, two years ago when Paul George almost took him to the finals and the and the Suns beat him. Then like this is just as tortured as torture gets, where you have the guy who played for your team for so many years, so many like agonizing playoff losses. Now he's on the other side, and you're still doing the same thing. You're just losing yeah. in agonizing fashion. And again, Chris Paul looks fantastic, and it would be an utter disappointment if he didn't win a championship this year. Like complete, complete career-defining disappointment if he didn't at least get. Like he's got to get to the finals, and he's got to play all the games in the finals. And if he does not win, I'd, I'd say like write him off. He's a he's a yeah but guy yeah. at that point. And KD's doing exactly what I would do. By the way. He's saying, I wish Kawhi was playing. I really do, because it would be so much more fun if I was getting to compete against their best players. I, I wish so bad that he was out on the I, I would do that all day yeah. if I was playing against a team that was injury riddled. I'd just be like, oh, man, this sucks. This, it doesn't even feel like I'm winning. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's the it, it drives me nuts when guys say it, but I absolutely would say the same thing. Like, man. Oh, 100%. 100% oh. Really, really wish that. Also, um, did you see the news about Kawhi's sister? Yeah, that was kind of crazy it's kind of crazy i just want to say like what they the should news? not be so Kawhi's sister got arrested for murder no she and... got uh uh she she got convicted of murder convicted of murder excuse me got yeah. convicted of murder and they're using Kawhi leonard's face as the picture in every news article about his sister getting convicted of murder i think that should be against the law yeah yeah they're they're basically being like they're not even saying her name 
They're just saying sister of Kawhi Leonard uh, convicted of murder for beating up an old uh, an old lady in a casino in 2019. Yeah, it's yeah, crazy. It's, a, it's a pretty, it's a crazy story. But they should not have Kawhi's face on as like the headline of that. Yeah, I'm stand up for my man Kawhi there. I agree. I agree. Um, okay, uh, Heat Bucks. Uh, all I had for this one was this is just the curse series. Everyone's hurt. Jimmy Butler got hurt. Victor Oladipo, I think, like tore his knee again, which he's was out for this. Yeah, he's out. Terrible. He's out. He might be he's out, out for, for forever. Yeah. That's, yeah. A, yeah. that's Patella. You could tell, too, everyone, like all the players and everyone was just like, you know, towel over their head, you know, shake it up because this guy fought so hard to come back. And now he looks like he's back to square one. Uh, Giannis obviously hasn't played since game one. Duncan Here, Robinson. Hero. What hero too? Hero, yeah, yeah. bro, yeah. Like every this, I, I actually don't know what's going. Like, what? How is this happening? This entire series is cursed. Yeah, it's it's been it's been crazy to watch. I the torn patella. That's in terms of uh, reactions from guys that are on the court or on the field when an injury happens. I'd say that the torn patella is always the worst. People just like cover their heads, like you said. They start puking. Uh, the guy starts like scream. I remember when Victor Cruz tore his. Yep. That was a bad scene. That's probably the worst one. Yeah, it, it's bad. And then, but the one positive of this series is our guy Duncan Robinson is is back. He's out of Spoh's doghouse. He scored twenty points. He went five for six from three. It's good because he's getting shit on. We have his back. We yeah. should cash People in. People have been trashing him all season. Yeah, not, they have. Look, you get the platform. He's taking advantage. Yeah, like put him. Oh, on they're the trashing him for being a podcaster. No, they're trashing him for just like. Like bad contract. Oh, oh, that's not. I thought. Yeah, they're they're trashing his podcast for platforming Duncan no. Robinson. Ah, on his podcast. okay. Yeah. You're paying him this, and he's not doing anything. Well, that's well, not. Look, they let him do something, and yeah. Also, I never never blame a player for their contract. Yeah. No, not all. No, how how many more injuries do we have to go through until Haslam starts getting some minutes? He, that's the real question. I think he did. He get he played in two minutes. He played two minutes yeah. on Saturday night. So to answer your question, we're there. That's how there. Cursed. Awesome. That's how cursed want, this is. I, that's that's how you know. I want I want Haslam to start at some point. I don't want anybody to get. We never root for injuries. God forbid. But I would say that we're probably like one injury away at this point from him starting a game. Yeah, uh, it's it, it's an insane series. Jimmy Butler still is like such a good player, but hopefully he 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 also feels like a guy who gets injured in. I feel like the last few playoffs he's missed a couple games here and there. So let's just turn injuries off. Turn them off, and be and bead. We can't even. That just happens. That's that's like you wake up in the morning and you take a shit. And bead gets injured. Again. It doesn't happen as much as. Uh, I think you're thinking uh, of him running out of gas. Oh, that's what usually happens. Oh, he's like breaking oh, up enough condition at the end of the year, so he just yeah, doesn't play true. well. You're right. Well, I got also, confused. <laughs> he also just acts like he's injured all the time. Like for for five seconds after most plays, and bead will. He'll have that look on his face where he grimaces, and you're like, oh, shit, oh, shit, this is bad. PFT, the tension between Hank and Max is building to such a perfect level. Like, it's not all the way there yet because Hank still has to beat the Hawks, but, like, the little chirps and stuff have started, and it's fucking great. It's everything yeah. I've wanted. I'm so excited. I've noticed, Me too. I've noticed Hank has had huge rivalries with everybody in this room. You, you just keep cycling through us. You keep bouncing from one to the other. And Max versus Hank, that's that's a rivalry I think that's going to top all of them. Yeah, I mean, that one goes back. I mean, even before Max was, was on the show, we, we talked a lot of shit in the office. This is just a, a continuation on, on this program. Max, also the latest is he didn't want – I said there has to be a sweep uh, clause in the upcoming Celtics Sixers series. Max was talking – Max was drunk the other night so, in the group text, I think, just I, being like, oh, the Celtics lost, the real shame, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that's where it's really going down. That, but he, that true. Max was like, I don't want a sweep clause. And I reminded him, you can't say you don't want a sweep clause when, like, three months ago you said Philly's title town. You can't, you can't get swept in the second round if you're title town. Yeah, no. Yeah, no, no. Sweep clause is in. Sweep clause is in. All right, so sweep clause is if either team sweeps, the other guy has to do the soul patch for three months. No, it's no, not. No, 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 <laughs> What? We are, we, what? We, That's the sweep clause. That was not the sweep clause. <laughs> Max, Max, I'm in on it. I agree to the sweep on well, behalf of Max. You can't grow a soul yeah. patch. <laughs> yeah, so like, oh, I can. There, I can grow. Was, that's that's the, the only thing I can, I can grow pubes in a soul patch. 
<laughs> but it would take you like six years. But you doing a, a facial hair bet is like me doing a weight gain bet. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like I, it's yeah. not really hurting you. If I was like I, a loser, has to gain ten pounds. I already get roasted for for my facial hair. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, the sweep clause three months. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Sounds when, like you I both are scared. Where did you? Where Sounds you got like the you both three are months from till the football season. No, yeah, so no, bad, so way. bad summer. <laughs> no way. Yeah, so bad summer will be great. <laughs> yeah, let's there do it. I almost no, want to lose this. No. Bet. Hank was like already scheduling out the games being like if the Celtics lose when would I have to have a soul patch like <laughs> it's 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 going to be great watching the No two we them. we just it's two full two full cycles two is, full cycles is, is the is the sweet You shouldn't goals. agree to that because he he is more more likely to get swept and also he's a fucking gorilla he grows hair like <laughs> I think it should be a month. I think one month. Let's say three months. You're not going to. No get, way. The three are, months. Hank, the Celtics are not going to get swept. True. So just we, say three months. We can't do three months. We can't do three months. Two months. Two, two one months. One month. Two months, but they have to be. Both the months have to be 31 days. One month. One month. One month. Two months. Six weeks. What about. What about two months, but they can be non-consecutive months? So you can do the first <laughs> one no right way now, they would do that. <laughs> and then you can do the second one in October. I don't hate that. Okay. All right. Deal. Fuck. Two non-consecutive months. All right. Beautiful. This is bullshit. Beautiful. Like, oh, if the Sixers get fucking swept, <laughs> don't get swept. Don't get. Don't talk shit and then get swept. I don't like. Don't even talk that much shit. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> that might be up there with the Zach Wilson and Patrick Mahomes <laughs> comment. <laughs> oh man! It, yeah, dude, just it's two very months easy. is so long. People are going to be so swept. bored. One it, six weeks. No, Embiid's going to be fine. Yeah. You said it yourself. If Paul Paul will will win a game, he's so good. If the Sixers get swept, I will never forget. Ah. All right, I'll put it. We'll put it in Embiid clause. Embiid has to play at least half the games. D uh, yes. Okay. All right. So that so it's two months, non consecutive two months, and Embiid has to play at least half the games. I love it. That's you're doing the math in your head. Yeah. <laughs> so October. You can do it. Who cares about October? October. Yeah. People yeah. just be like, oh, it's a Halloween costume for yeah. at least one weekend. So right, one you're not going to be nutting anyway. No, yeah. it's November. Fuck. Do November. But, yeah, so it, it's one month. The sweep clause would be one month. Now. Immediately. And then I can yes. choose my other month. Yes. Okay. But yeah, it can't I'm, be okay. February. Before, yeah. It before, cannot be yeah, February. Yeah, it's going to be before Unless the, it's a leap year. Before the end of the year. No, before the end of the year. Before, <laughs> before the end of the year. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's fine. Is this 2024 leap year? Is it? Yeah, because you guys started in 2016. Okay, you can so do February. You can do February, because that's fun. If it's a leap year. If it's a, if it's 29 uh, days. Okay, fine. Okay. Oh, man. This is fine. Max, Max losing another Super Bowl with a soul patch would be so awesome. Oh, man. All right, Hank, what do you think about the Celtics and Hawks? You lost the game. Yeah, that was and a good win. really that, gave it to you. Yeah, he was he was chirping like well, the Celtics he, were going to lose a series. But it was a good it was a good wake-up call. The Celtics didn't play defense. The Hawks hit, I think, 78% of their threes. Uh, is, that a, is that a Frank Fleming stat? I don't think so. <laughs> I think that's I think that's accurate. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, it was a good wake up call. They can't play defense like that, you know, in the to win in the playoffs. They got, you know, it was a wake up call. They and now they're good. Back on track. You know what? It, it's good it happened in this round. Yeah. No, I I the Hawks I, hit I agree. Forty four percent of their threes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was the first half. I don't know what it was. It was they didn't miss a shot. <laughs> they didn't miss a shot. They hit seventy percent of the ones that I saw. <laughs> as far as you saw. It, <laughs> it might have been the first half. It might have been the first half. They didn't even hit. They went fifty-six percent from the field, like overall. Eighty-one percent from first, free throw. First <laughs> quarter, forty-three points, seventy-six percent. That's 70, the all right, he was first quarter. At. First yeah. quarter. How exactly. many quarters did they play? Four. Wait, you guys were winning thirty-seven, thirty-three in the it first was a, quarter. It was a crazy quarter. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when the Hawks hit their, all their threes, no, it's forty-three. Winning. Maybe it was during a media timeout. I just see a tweet: forty-three points for the Hawks and seventy-six percent shooting in the first. Okay, so thank you, Jake. Okay, that was from March six. Totally disregard that. Oh no! <laughs> yeah. I'm just look. I just typed in talk seventy-six percent. The wait, I don't know where that was got from that. March six. Yeah, that no, game. That was no. the game I was talking about. They Celtics and Hawks heat. played a game. No, that's Hawks Heat. 
at the end of the regular season <laughs> Wait, where what the fuck? The, it was like 100. The Celtics won like 134 to 129. There was no defense. That game on Friday was the same way. Hank, did, did you? I forget. Did you say seventy eight percent or seventy six percent? He said seventy six, and then Jake Six. found the Hawks hitting seventy six yeah. in the wrong March game. against the Heat. Yeah, the seventy sixers are in Hank's head so hard oh, right now. No, that's true. I'm not you worried pick about the 76ers. at the lottery ball. Nah. No. Maybe. Right. No. Maybe. No. Uh, okay. If we sweep. So you guys are you guys are okay? The series over. Yeah. Done? Yeah. No question? No. None. I'm, cu- I'm curious. If we lose Max, the series, I'll do the soul what patch. What if the Hawks go 76% from three again? If the Celtics lose the series, I'll do the soul patch out of respect. Two months? One month. Max, I'm curious from your perspective in all this. Uh, technically, I think Hank's your boss. Oh, has yeah. this Has this rivalry impacted your professional relationship with Hank? Not, I mean, I mean, not yet, but it hasn't. It, it could. <laughs> it I, I don't want. I don't want to speak a couple weeks from now. I think it will. Yeah, yeah it absolutely will. Um, okay. Some people are saying that you're withholding the golf video because you're so angry at Hank. Sure. Yeah. When is that coming out? I don't know. Okay. It's like <laughs> it's like done. I, I don't know. <laughs> so just put it out. Just sell. You should just sell it like like DVDs for twenty bucks outside of a Knicks game. Five hundred K subs. Five hundred K subs. That's gotta happen. Um. All right. We're gonna talk Warriors, uh, Kings, and some hockey. But first, a quick word from our friends at Sport Clips. It can be stressful to describe the kind of haircut you want, and even if you feel like you got it across, it's hard to know your stylist really understands you. Too often, hair care results in a hair scare. Fortunately, the stylist at Sport Clips. Haircuts speak the language of hair. You could say that they're fluent in fades, literate in long locks, and just all around clippers confident. It doesn't matter if your hair is balding or billowing. Sport clips, stylists are black belts in cutting men's hair. They've been specially trained to do it. These pros are artists. You are the canvas, and each of your hair follicles is the happiest of trees. So sit back and relax. It's MVP haircut experience time. That means a seven pressure point massaging shampoo. That is the best, by the way. The, the mas- massage shampoo, the best. A perfectly steamed hot towel and the freedom to not have to stress about a bad cut. Guys, if you're looking for the perfect haircut, go to Sport Clips. Next time you need a cut, come to Sport Clips and get a head turning haircut from the pros in men's hair. They also have an option that you can wait online, online. So you don't have to sit there and wait forever. You can make an appointment. Walk right in, be ready for your head to have a wonderful experience at Sport Clips, getting a perfect haircut from all their stylists. We're also brought to you by our friends at Coors Light. Sometimes the days can get so crazy that you forget to make time for fun. When that happens, you've got to choose to chill. So go ahead, you say yes to midweek happy hours and catching the game after work. And while you're at it, enjoy an ice cold Coors Light the beer that's made to chill. There's only one beer out there that's literally made to chill, and that's Coors Light. The mountains on the bottles and cans even turn blue when your beer is cold. That way you always know when it's time to chill. When you're making time to chill, crack open a Coors Light. It's mountain cold refreshment made to chill. When you choose to chill, pair your plans with an ice cold Coors Light. I had a couple uh, on Friday night watching some playoff basketball. It was fantastic. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash take. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Coors Light, the best beer in the entire world. Our favorite beer. It's also getting time where you got to start tweeting us those uh, blue mountains because I will retweet them and I will go get an ice cold Coors Light. Okay. Warriors Kings. Um, Steph Curry dodged a major bullet. Major mm-hmm. bullet. Uh if you didn't watch the game, basically what happened was the the Warriors were up like four or five, pretty much for the the late stretch of the game. It was it was a close game, and then with I don't know forty five seconds left, Steph got trapped in the backcourt, called a timeout, didn't have a timeout because Steve Kerr had used it on a challenge that he lost. Uh, Kings got a free throw and the ball, hit a three, down one with twenty. Six seconds left, and then Steph went down and shot uh, a floater with 12 seconds left on the shot clock, giving the Kings a chance 
to win the game and basically end the Warriors because 3-1 would have been very tough to come back from, especially with the way they've been playing on the road. And Harrison Barnes, who has been waiting for this moment for, what, six years, seven years, uh, clanked the what would have been the winning three, and uh, the Warriors survive, and it's 2-2, and we got ourselves a series. This is the best series of, of round one. I think we all would agree. Yeah, it's been it's been so fun. Every game has been just electric, and we are yeah we we did get a little ahead of ourselves with our beam team talk and all that, but it was fun. I'm not going to apologize for that. Uh, there was a very interesting quote from Draymond after the game regarding that shot that Harrison Barnes took, and in uh, I guess a touching tribute to Harrison Barnes' ricochet shot at him, and he said uh, that we know that Fox is a clutch player. He's a great player that can make those shots at the end of the game. So we decided not to let him go ISO on us. Essentially just saying we were going to let Harrison Barnes shoot if he got the ball. That was that was our game plan on that last play. And, and, and that is what, how they played it. Yeah, that is exactly how they played it. And um, the the, uh, the Steph Curry timeout thing had a lot of people talking about Chris Webber. Yep. And his timeout, the timeout, as they call it, in the national championship game. People forget, though, that that timeout, that fake timeout that didn't exist, that is maybe the ultimate ball don't lie moment. Yes. Because Weber got the ball on the inbounds pass, and he traveled. He, like, clearly walked. The refs didn't call it, and then he goes down and does that. That's I think that's number one if we're doing all-time ball don't lie power rankings. I would I would say that's probably number one, and number two – would be uh, the J Davion Clowney hit against Michigan because the play before that, they measured the first down and the ball was short and the ref just gave them the first down. Spurrier was out there on the field pointing at like, hey, there's two inches right there. There's two inches. Very next play, Clowney blows him up in the backfield, picks the ball up. Yeah, that, that you are right. The Chris Weber was the, the most egregious travel. But yeah, Steph had a bad, and it was crazy too because Doris Burke, um, and I love Doris Burke. She's she's phenomenal. She had two things that that made me like scratch my head. One was she said uh, Steph Curry is somehow still underrated. I don't. In what world? In what mm. world? We had this whole segment two years ago where you told me to remind you every week to respect Steph Curry. We do, but he's been winning that last one. Like there yeah. is no, there's nothing left. But there was a portion when he yeah recently, when they had recently. when they missed the playoffs yeah. But then I think last year was it. Like there's no one, no one underrates him anymore, right? Oh, I man. think, I think if you become so overrated that people always say that you're overrated, then at some point you can then become underrated. And I think that's what Steph was when what Jake just brought up before he won his fourth title, when it was yeah. when he had won the three, and then you know they missed the playoffs, he got injured, people kind of forgot about him. But last year was it? Like that was Steph Curry's an all time great. Right? Yeah. There, yeah. There, yes. Absolutely. There's definitely a curve where you start and you're good and then you're underrated. And then you get, you defeat the underrated label. And then you're right. awesome for a while. People agree that you're awesome. And then people are like, no, you're overrated because you haven't won every championship in the last 10 years. Right. And then at that point, you can become underrated yet again. And that's exactly when Steph won the title. Yeah. On the, and what now, you just described. Because then he became yes. back to level. Yes, and yeah. now he's back up again. So, no, I don't think that Steph Curry is underrated. He was, but he no, no longer is. Yeah, he, but then, he will be. But if he wins a championship this year, then he's going to be overrated next year. Agreed. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. And then... Jake, set a reminder that if Steph Curry wins the title this year, that we have to start calling him overrated in, like, March. And then if he's still playing when he's, like, 37, even without a title, he's back to underrated. Yep. Right now, he's exactly correctly rated. Yep, perfect. He's, he's the perfect rated right now. Um, and then the other was, she kept on mentioning that the Kings were making dumb young team mistakes, which they were. Their shot selection was suspect in the in the uh, fourth quarter. But Steph made, like, the two dumbest young team mistakes that were, like, Steph got bailed out so bad in this game, and I, he, he had to have breathe the like largest sigh of relief because the back-to-back -back timeout and then shooting with 12 seconds left on the shot clock it was I was like is something wrong with Steph Curry because it, it's some a mistakes that you just didn't expect the Warriors to make and they were making them yeah it's also tough for the for the Kings to lose a Keegan Murray game yeah if you get a Keegan Murray 23 point game 
that's on the road, that's one that you have to win. That's and a Big Ten championship. Really, really, the in, the entire region of Northern California, they're undefeated. It's a sweep. That's true. 4-0. Um, the other last thing I had was Draymond Green. I know that he gets talked about a lot because he does dumb shit. He is on another level defensively. Like I actually think that if you're the Warriors, you want him to get suspended at least once a playoff because he came back today and he was just wrecking everything. Like he was immediately gets attack. He was he dude. He was so good in that fourth quarter. There was a couple possessions where he blocked. Like he he was basically playing two on one in the post. He would you know there was a block. Then there was one time where Sabonis came down. And even before Sabonis could like set up what he wanted to do and back him down, he just picked his pocket. Like he just does it all defensively. I don't think because he gets talked about for all the other shit, rightfully so. Sometimes we forget how, just how game changing he is defensively and his passing. Yeah. When he, when he got that tech, that wasn't for the foul, right? That was for the talking back and forth after the foul. I believe so. Yeah. Okay, good. Because I was going to say that would have been a reputation call if he got if he got that technical foul because his hand actually the face made contact with his hand. He right. didn't. It didn't look like he meant to do that. He and he when he gets suspended, he doesn't like. Did he say anything after he got suspended for game three? I feel like he doesn't complain. Yes, he did. What do you mean? What he said? He said, uh, "I've never heard of someone getting suspended for something they did like a few years ago." Oh, okay. Wait. What do you mean? Some he did a few years ago. They said part of the suspension was oh. because of his previous All right, so he did actions. complain. All right, I was proven wrong. I just think that he backs up his villain heel way better than Dylan Brooks. Yeah. Oh, a million percent. He is he is a villain. He is he's a million percent the correct villain. Like Dylan Brooks wakes up every morning, he tells himself in the mirror, like you you can beat Dream On today. Yeah. Beat Dream On. Just like Max says, You're gonna beat Hank. You're gonna do it. You're not gonna have yeah. to get a soul patch for two two non consecutive months. I can't stop thinking about the soul patch. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. The, the sweep clause it's, is, it's, is. You are Dylan Brooks. You 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 are in your own head constantly. It really is the mirror meme where yeah. where Dylan Brooks is pointing at himself and just going, "Go out there and you be Draymond today." Yeah, yeah, you do it. You 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 can do this. You know what? You're a shooter. You're not just defense. You can you can score. Shoot every yeah. shot. Let me ask you, Big Cat, uh, if if the Kings lose this series, are we going to have any regret at all for getting Kings fever? No, because I also I have a future on the Warriors, so there will be no regret. Okay. None That's whatsoever. Good. Kings fever, hepatitis beam, whatever you want to call it. Listen, we, it's a longstanding theme of this show. You have to enjoy the ride. So any yep. Kings fan, if this series – I have had Hank's thought in my head – all weekend when he was like, as soon as you guys started talking up the Kings, I was like, they're not going to win another game because <laughs> mm -hmm. well, yeah, yeah, it's it's starting to feel that way. Because um, well, Hank Hank's been around us for so long that he knows the way that we get about things and get super excited just to have everything shatter. Yeah, but don't no one should ever, as a sports fan, as a person, should ever regret the emotions they feel in the moment. Yep. Don't th those. Oh, oh, you, oh, you, oh, you said something on Twitter. The two days later was a, was a bad take. Oh, who cares? That's that's what I was feeling. Live in the moment. Yeah. Enjoy the ride. That's why we don't hold January six against Billy. Right. Exactly. He was living in the moment. He was like, me and my bros are gonna go do something fun. We want to feel alive. And we're like, do it, yeah. dude. We'll cover for you. We'll say you were here <laughs> recording, so that when yeah. the FBI knocks on our door, it won't be a problem. And what has happened? No problems. It's actually been a blessing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You came back a rejuvenated man. We were led into the Senate. <laughs> like, like, it wasn't, we didn't go there purposefully. They led us there. <laughs> they were like, come on. It's uh, fun. I was like, oh. <laughs> oh, man. Um, should we, I mean, Nuggets, your Nuggets look awesome. Mm -hmm. My Nuggets are awesome. They're they don't going for the awesome. sweep. They are awesome. And they haven't even had a Jokic game yet. Like he's he's been dominating, but he hasn't been like filling up the stat sheet in terms of I don't think he's been the leading scorer in any of their wins so far. They're getting it done. Porter, Murray stepping up, our big three. Absolutely loving it. It's uh yeah, it it thankfully the one series because this happens every single year where there's one series where like it's ten thirty starts on recording nights and we'll like miss it or it will be like a Monday night and we'll just be so late. This this was a good series to have be the miss series because mm -hmm. they're going to sweep them. And I don't know what, where the wolves go from here. No, it's actually great. 
when you're in the weird spot that I've put myself in with this series because I wake up and I check what the score was first thing in the morning and I'm pumped no matter what. I'm like, awesome, Nuggets won. That's yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe it won't be a sweep. We'll see. Uh, all right, should we talk some playoff hockey? What PFT? I know that you got some stuff going on, but Saturday had three consecutive overtimes. It was awesome. And four counting if you count the game, the last game Friday night. Were you counting that? I I mean, I yeah, I just I pay attention. Well, you told us no. to bet the overtimes, and we did. They, like, I, what a day to have three I, out of the four games go to overtime, and Hank gave us this betting strategy to bet all overtimes? Yeah, it was awesome. Hank, That's that's you're so sharp when it comes to playoff hockey. Congratulations, Hank. Hank, I might Congrats retire from all the winnings I got. Yeah, yeah, I hope there's people listening that listen to me. Uh, I didn't listen to myself. What so. do you mean? Well, and I'm, at the end of the day, it's it's all on me. It's man in the arena. I'm the only person responsible. But Quiggs, uh, one of our coworkers, he's kind of the round robin guy. He we were in this together. And then on Thursday at the office, he was really talking me out of it, saying it's bad value, it's bad value, it's bad value. It lost three nights in a row. Got in my head. I didn't bet it Saturday. Wait, what? I didn't bet it Saturday. Wait, oh. but you bet it the three nights in a row that it lost. Yep. But you didn't bet it hey, four. Saturday. Saturday had three. Saturday had three. If you did the round robin, you would have cashed a lot. And it had three overtime. It had games. three. It almost looked like four. I lost a lot of sleep. It, it ruined my entire night. I was just pacing around my apartment, just looking for someone to blame. But there's no one to blame but myself and, and Quigs. But Hank, I'm so sorry because like when I when I was congratulated, I thought that you had bet it because you were so into this bet. I didn't. That was not a troll. I'm not trolling you. I'm so sorry that they, this is the worst thing that's happened to anybody on this podcast this week. I agreed. Yeah, it's been a, it's been it was a long, long, long night Saturday. Thankfully, thankfully, the Avalanche game was tied going into the third period, and if that had went to overtime, I probably wouldn't be here right now. But what? But it still cashed a lot. If you bet it, it cashed a lot. So I hope people Damn, listen yeah. and and bet it. Damn, were there? But any, you didn't bet it. Were there any NBA games where the fourth quarter had the exact same score? I don't know. I didn't. I stopped <laughs> doing that. That's where. Whatever. <laughs> Jack McCarthy, too. We can throw some blame his way. <laughs> okay, okay. But man in the arena, just you. Yeah, no one to blame but yourself. Right. And Quigs. <laughs> right. Um, okay, so yeah, playoff hockey has been incredible. Three overtime games in one day was awesome. The Devils are back a lot. Like, I I think every series, um, I guess now there's some series that are 3-1, uh, the Bruins being one of them, but there's, Islanders. I think tomorrow night, yeah, Islanders being another one, tomorrow night, uh, we have four games that are two one series. Like that's going to that. be awesome. I love that. I'm do you think I should? I should not. I should not do it. It's over, right? That was it. Uh, no, you should keep trying. I, I, I think it is over, and I think there's just going to be a shitload of overtimes. So, sh <laughs> <laughs> whatever you what, decide yeah. to do, the opposite's going to happen. That's yeah, right. That's where we're at. You could kind of, you control playoff hockey this year. You should not do it. And then when overtimes happen, people can say, thank you, Hank, for giving us such a great playoff hockey. Right? Yeah, I guess. Because whatever you do, you will lose. Yeah, that's how it feels right now. Um, hey, your, your, uh, your Bruins had a great moment at the end of the game, Hank, when the, the goalie tried to fight Kachuk. That was awesome. It was yeah. also kind of, a, it was kind of a hold me back moment because he knew exactly where the linesman was at that point. But seeing a goalie throw his gloves off is one of the coolest parts of hockey it's, that you you almost never get to see. Chuck's a scumbag. What? Why? He, he just plays. He the he's he's cheap shotter. Oh no, the Bruins don't have anybody like that on their team. No, Brad Marchand hasn't got a penalty the whole the whole playoffs. This is, remember yeah, when, but you remember when PFT would be like Tom Wilson hasn't been suspended for any regular season games. Yeah. <laughs> It's a fact. It's a fact. Just he plays the game hard. Playoffs in, in preseason. <laughs> he, he plays the game. He plays the game the right way on that edge. Hank, you have a, you have a guy that licks people. No, they team. said on the broadcast today. Marshawn knows his reputation. He knows it's bigger than him. He's he's playing smart. No penalties. Hey, no licking. Good. How's how's been uh, the Bruins bandwagon? You feel good. Yeah, we're back on the Bergeron thing. Concerns me. I feel like it's going to be tough to win a cup without Bergeron. But you know they're playing well without him. And hopefully it gets better. Yeah. The the Leafs are back. That was an awesome comeback for them. And and uh, to win in overtime was pretty sick. Uh, I saw there was a Leafs fan who got a Stanley Cup tattoo, which they literally Ooh. went 
They went up two one for like two hours, and the guy got the tattoo. Like the shittiest tattoo. Yeah, ever shittiest too. Like, tattoo it's like ever. A prison prison I tattoos it. are better than what this guy got. Fuck. I, I blame the tattoo artist for that. At some point, you have to draw a line. That's a bad tattoo pun, but you do have to you have to tell your your customer like this. I'm not going to do this. This is just this is the dumbest idea. You could get literally anything else tattooed on your body besides a Toronto Maple Leaf Stanley Cup champion tattoo, and it would be it would be fine. Yeah, and I wouldn't blame the artist for that. That's on you. You should be dis disbarred or whatever it is. Um, Islanders minute. Bury the tape. Bury the tape. Wait, but I like that. You gotta watch it and just figure out what went wrong. No, no, everything went wrong. It was a terrible game. So. Uh, it's over, right? No, no, no. Blowouts happen all the time in the playoffs. You right. gotta bounce back. But you're down three one, and the one game you won. Well, no, you guys blew them out, right? Yeah, yeah, because you had game three. Usually, the home team when they're down two zero comes back, wins a game, and now it's over. No, no, no. no. So, win on Tuesday. Win on Thursday. Win on, on Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, Whoa. fuck it. He's just giving them a path, PFT. I see it. It sounds like if they get three wins in a row, the Islanders could really take control of the series. Do yeah. you think that the series has been like 50-50? I guess you did have game two, that, that missed call. Yeah, and they scored on themselves in game two. <laughs> That's hard to do. Yep. First two games only lost by one. One blowout. She got score more goals than the other team. Yeah. Let's just do it. Okay. Yeah, let's just be legends. I like that. But today was really bad. Yeah. Very bad. Very, very bad. Um, Start off hot. F- five early shots immediately to a five on three, and the game is over. Oh, man. Memes. You got to go down 2 0 now. That's the key. Go down two goals to nothing, and then come back, win. Then you guys will win the series. Well, they did that today. Yeah. Most dangerous lead in hockey. They so, went down 3 0, 4 0. So whoever. 4 0? Did you go down 4 0? Yeah. 5 0? No, 4 0. 4 1. It was 4 1, 5 1. But whoever scores first has won. Okay, so there you go. We got to keep the keys to success. And then the Oilers-Kings has been an awesome series, but it goes on so late. It's 3-3 right now in the third. I guess we'll if we if we are still here at the end of the show, we'll update everyone. Will Ferrell's going to just every game. He was at the Lakers game. He's got this weird face paint Kings game. And I have to say, I love it. I, I know that like some people are like, oh, he's being a try- Like If you're as rich as Will Ferrell... And as famous as him, and you've done as much as him, just being like going to games and just being a fool would be so much fun. Yeah, just uh, my entire life would be spent just going to different sporting events. Right. That's it. Right. And it's like you can, it probably is also like one of the nice times where you can go out in public and then when you're sitting at your seat, people aren't going to most likely bother you. So good for him. Enjoy. That's why he worked so hard for those like seven years where he put out three movies a year and everybody was like, okay, we, we get it, Will. We get it. It's it's for times like this. Now's the time where you just relax. Agreed. Agreed. Um, okay, anything else in the sports world before we do who's back? Anything? Billy set um, up. He gave me a false start. My defenders in XFL North Championship game next weekend. Huge. 9-1 of the year. That's the XFL minute. Okay, XFL minute. Uh, all right, let's do who's back, and then we have NFL Draft Talk with Peter Schrager. Who's back of the week is brought to you by our friends – at Sony Pictures because the new film Big George Foreman is a never before seen look into the unbelievable true story of George Foreman's life inside and outside of the ring. I went to I, I said this last episode, but I went to the movies last week to see air, saw the preview for this. I am absolutely gonna see this movie. I'm very excited. We had a big boxing match this weekend. It's everyone's feeling it. Uh so watch George Foreman's story of one of the greatest comebacks in sports history. After winning the Olympic gold medal and heavyweight title, George Foreman retired only to return to the ring 10 years later to once again win the heavyweight championship for a second time at 45 years old. It's an inspirational, relatable story about the second chances and overcoming obstacles. George Foreman is played by Chris Davis in a transformational lead performance where he gained 45 pounds to play Foreman throughout his career and his boxing training lasted for over 15 months to learn all the fights in the movie and perf- uh, perfect Foreman's style of fighting. The film also stars Academy Award winner Forrest Whitaker as Foreman's boxing coach. 
The film features fa famous, dynamic boxing matches recreated on the big screen. Foreman's story is one of the greatest comeback stories in the sporting uh, slash boxing history. Big George Foreman is exclusively in movie theaters April 28th. Tickets are on sale now, rated PG-13. I'm going to see this movie. Same. I also saw a clip of George Foreman punching a heavy bag at however old he is now. I don't know how old he is. He's got to be in his, like, 70s. And he just said, power doesn't age. And then he just fucking walloped on this heavy bag and looked like he could still make a comeback. I, I just want to see how he gets around his house having all his kids named George. Yeah. He's a legend. So this movie, we're going to review this movie. I'm going to say it right now. He's 74. So, Hank, that look you gave me doesn't count. I said he was in his 70s, and you're like, eh. I didn't. Never yeah, happened. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Hank's doing looks. He's 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 putting out all the looks. Serving looks. You're serving this is looks. You just, yeah, you're gaslighting, gaslighting, deciding, gaslighting deciding what gaslighting. I'm saying. Gaslighting. You're just sitting here. Will you, why don't we go see this movie together? Okay. All right. So, that we're going to go see Big George Foreman together. I'm very excited. We're going to review the movie. W when do you want to see it? Friday afternoon? You tell me. Friday afternoon. Okay. Is that... Yeah, Friday afternoon. It'll be out. Perfect. Done. Great. It's a date. Awesome. Don't try to touch my penis. Okay. <laughs> okay. Who's back of the week? Uh, my who's back of the week is Chief Keef. Oh. I love that. Uh, okay. Davis love Garcia fight. He walked uh, Tank Davis out singing Love Sosa, and I was watching it, and I just, you know, kind of hit me. First of all, Chief Keef was 16 when that song got put out. Banger. 10 years ago. He doesn't really even put music out. And it's just a testament to how good that song is and how you know big he was when he was 16 years old that that song is still relevant today to the point where he's walking out the number one prize fighter for the biggest fight of the year. It was it was an awesome moment because I just I had had the same exact feeling as you. It's like, oh my God, I forgot about this song. And he walked out. I was like, that song's like really, really good. Where and he put it out when he was 16. It? Yeah. I also, uh, that fight was great because it was, Whenever boxing has, like, a big, big fight where it's two undefeated guys, it's like, there's just nothing like it. It just feels like my whole day, I was like, I can't wait for this fight. PFD, I had a real throwback experience with this fight that you'll appreciate and maybe not anyone else. I bought this fight on regular pay-per-view with my TV. It was nice. awesome. I looked through it yeah. in the sports guide. And bought the fight. I tried to do that and I couldn't find it. I was, I was, and then like, I started. I was late. I was around late. I was like, it, I transported in time. It was so fucking cool, and that meant I could go. I could f like flip back and forth between the fight and the Lakers game. Like, yeah, I, 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 I want to be able to buy every fight like that. It was so much hitting fun. a button. Hitting a button on your TV is incredible, and and getting the fight. I love it. There was also a sick, sick liver knockout, which oh, is my oh. favorite type of knockout. It is the best. I think I've said this on the show, but I love to just watch YouTube compilations of liver knockouts because, and it was perfect. You get that like five second moment, or it felt like five seconds. It's probably only like one or two, but you get hit in the stomach and then you take two steps back and then it's just debilitating pain that just paralyzes you. And everybody was like, what the fuck happened? That's this fight's this is rigged. Yeah. That, that didn't count. This is he took a dive. But no, the liver knockout. I hope to God I'm never punching my liver. Yeah. I'm, I protect my liver at all costs besides not drinking. That was my who's back liver shots. Yeah. Liver shots. Just Hell epic. Yeah. It was uh, it was very fun to watch all of Twitter debate whether he quit or not because he did pop up after. But like a liver shot is. Yeah, you could see it. He just couldn't, like, his whole body shut down. Davis knew, too, right away. Right away. Yep. Yeah, Tank Davis' hands are fucking insane. He's just so much power. Uh, okay, is that your who's back? Good who's back? Uh, my other who's back is the four aces. Oh. Yeah. Let's yeah. go. Chris was fucking pumped. Absolute wagon. Uh, I think it's their fifth win. No other no other team has won the yard goat. Or, no, the range goat. Sorry. They had the lead going into the final round. They choked it away. I watched because it was Friday and Saturday night. Sports on all night, late, and then it was a nice little kind of wean off the sports because it was on at it started at ten, it was on till like two a.m. I watched both nights; it was entertaining. Crazy crowds; they had DJs going at every hole. It was good golf. I, I, I you know, I'm, I really don't care one way or the other. I don't know. I think it helped because it was so late at night. I don't know if Liv, Liv can figure out a way to to do all their events at night, even when they're in the U.S. That's probably not possible. Uh, 
but I, I watched it. I was enjoyed. I actually kind of liked the team format today because the four aces, they were coming back. It made sense where before it was like, why the team thing means nothing, but it was kind of entertaining to watch. Like as each player, you know, would get a birdie or someone would get a bogey. It's like, oh, this team, this team might win. This team might lose. It, it, it kind of made sense. Yeah. It's, it's, Brooks, that's brother. Maybe it's, it's golf, but louder. I walked in a coffee shop this morning. Everybody was talking about the four aces. It was yeah. incredible. Brooks's brother had a hole in one. Yeah, it was went awesome. Crazy. They were throwing stuff on the tee box. It was insane. And it was funny because I watched it and they didn't. I didn't have sound on, and I thought it was Brooks because I was like, I couldn't. They didn't really show his face at the hiccups, and so I was happy for Brooks. I'm happy for I'm Brooks happy for hitting for that hole in one. Regardless, I'm yeah, happy Brooks, that his brother got Kepka a hit a hole in one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Brooks, but Brooks played well. That's the thing. Watching, I was watching. It's like, yeah, you're you're watching. Brooks is one of the best players in the world. Cam Smith, one of the best players in the world. Like when when they're hitting great golf shots, it's entertaining. It doesn't really matter what you know. Cam Smith did a shoey. Cam Smith did a shoey. It was sick. I was just I, getting all my I, live golf updates through your Twitter. Feed. I do think, yeah, I do think that it was a the the just ripping DJ music in the middle of play was a little bit weird. I, I feel like the golfers have to be like, this is cool. This is what we want. But there's, there's no way that they're not walking off being like, this is fucking brutal. Patrick Cantley would still be out there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. okay. He, Good. He back. And it got a veto on repeat for his round. By the way, uh, I'm, who's back? I, I, I'm addicted to Patrick Cantley, uh, clips. Cause they, they he just does keep, it on purpose now. And they keep coming out every single day. The, there's old ones. There's new ones. It just every shot takes like five minutes. It's not his fault though. I'm I'm on his side. What? They don't police him. Oh, so you're saying he's just playing within the rules? But he's not. But if they're not going to enforce the rules, why shouldn't he do it? That's what he says. He says I. You know, no one. When talking about the Masters, he's like, I played this. I know I play slow. I've known this my whole life. No one at any point during the Masters was like, you have to play faster. So I didn't. Okay, that's consider. actually a fair, yeah. fair point. No, I, I tell my son, Chris, I say, you have to go to bed. It's nine o'clock and the Aces are still playing, but I don't actually take them upstairs. And it's on me as a parent for not enforcing bedtime. Right. Four Aces are stacked. I love this iteration of Hank. Are they Just a dream team? CW. Yeah. Super team? They're stacked. Who, who's on it? Uh, Pat, it's Reed, Johnson, Pat Perez. I don't know who their fourth is, but it's only top three that matter. You don't know the fourth ace? No, I don't. You just told us how every every team is every team is three good guys in a scrub. How do you not know the fourth ace? <laughs> every guy. it's literally the four aces, and you can't name the fourth ace. Doesn't matter. No, that does matter. Ringo. Who? Ringo. We got to know the fourth uh, ace. Peter Uline? Yeah, no, it's every 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 team Jesus is like Christ, every team ace. every team and live. You you go to see their team and it's like, okay, but there's Hank, three you, there's three names I recognize and then. But Hank, you do realize that it, it, they would be the three aces. But only, yeah, they're four. They're, they're the, the four, four aces, aces, but only three. No, there's four of them. There's four of them. They're four aces. It says it in the name, right? But only the top three matter. But they're the four aces. They are the four aces. There, this guy Peter Hewlin. Jake, I don't know if that's correct. I don't know either. He's so rich now because of the four aces. And good he doesn't have to do shit. Good for him. It is you line. That was right. Yeah. Good yeah. for him. Uh, all right. What's your who's back, PFT? Uh, my who's back of the week is Cactuses. Oh, yeah. Cactuses talk are back big, ca time. Well, big time. Big time. Cacti. 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 Good, yeah. good point. Yep. Yeah. Let's thank talk about thank this. you for correcting my grammar You're correctly welcome. this time, Hank. Yep. You're, no problem. Uh, so after our show that we recorded on, on I guess that was Thursday. Uh, Thursday night, Billy, after we signed off, said, Hey, uh, I know that we sent your laptop to you, but was there any other like weird gifts down there? And when Billy asked me, like, Do you have a weird gift that's waiting from Billy Football? I was immediately like, Well, I have to go down and see what this gift is right now. Uh, which is very thoughtful that Billy sent a present over. So I went downstairs to the hotel lobby, asked them if they had a, a another package for me. They handed it to me. I come back upstairs and I open it up, and Billy sent me uh, a lovely cactus in the mail mm. um, as a like sorry uh, sympathy cactus. Yeah. Which I um, I then I'm taking it over to my. I actually took it over to my mom's house yesterday. So um, I dropped it off. And uh, she says, thank you very much, Billy. Um, she doesn't have to water it, which is nice. It's a gritty plant, which is nice. Cactuses are basically a gift that you give to somebody and you're like, you suck at keeping things alive. Here's a cactus. Yeah. I had a feeling you're going to get a bunch of flowers 
and I thought, why don't I get you like the the grittiest flour? No, but say say why you really didn't get him flowers because you told us on Thursday. Billy didn't want to get you flowers because he's like flowers die and then you'll think you're dead dad. Yeah, <laughs> that's what yeah. he told us, and we're like, no, that's, oh, that's, okay. <laughs> that's that's exactly what I was saying. It's like you can't. Here's here's one thing that won't die. It's a cat. It also reminded me of what a little prick Billy is. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say because I told him. I was like, because you're staying in a hotel and you're coming back. And I was like, you just gave PFT. I mean, it's nice you gave it to your mom. But I, at first I was like, you just gave PFT something that like you can't f- you, fit in okay, a luggage. Okay. You guys like, are just you guys are just feeling guilty because you didn't send flowers or any presents. No, mm. I would never send someone a cactus yeah. after a family death. Be, well, the cactus. I mean, I think it's, it's like a little more like just like a bro gift. Like here's a cactus yeah. out of all the to flowers. PFT's mom. Well, it was to PFT. It was. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was to me. So I, I think the real reason is Billy didn't want to send flowers because then he'd be like, "What?" He probably thinks I'm gay. Yeah, sus. So it, sus. Cactuses aren't sus. No, definitely they're not, not sus. It's like it's like here's a flower that will hurt you. Yeah, yeah. It, it's important <laughs> whenever giving a sympathy gift to someone to make sure your masculinity stays intact. Yeah, I, I appreciated that, Billy. Thank <laughs> you. Honestly, it, it was nice. Thank you for thinking of me. Yeah, you did. I mean, you did think like more than just like send whatever so that you do get credit for that. Exactly. Yeah. Good friend, Billy. Great friend. Billy. How big was the cactus? It's a cute little guy. Oh, nice. It's I like thought fist size. I thought it was multiple. I thought it was cacti that you sent. No, no. Yeah. Um, no, uh, my, my other who's back is baseball cards, because um, one of the things that you get to do when you're cleaning out a bunch of stuff that belongs to your parents is you get to find all your old baseball cards that you had when you were a kid. Mm-hmm. And I had a shitload of them and they're still in like their big ba- Every kid has a baseball card binder that they keep. And I've got a thick ass binder filled with hopefully some good baseball cards. I've never been. We did like that. That uh, we were ripping packs right with King Golden that one time. I'm gonna bring the binder back. I'm gonna sit down. What Doug's is is a big baseball card guy. Yep. I'm gonna have him go through all my childhood baseball cards and figure out if there are any decent ones in there because I'm pretty sure that I've got at least uh, at least like a handful of rare valuable baseball cards so i'm pumped about that that's awesome i uh as a kid when i had the binder of baseball cards i had the genius thought to take all the really good ones out and separate them and then i lost the separate one so i went through my baseball cards like i don't know it was like five years ago and it was just pages of just the worst players possible you know, I, I definitely had a side box where you put the good yeah. ones in yes. like the in the solid paper. Yes. Or solid plastic. Yes. And I definitely did that. I have not looked to see if I have those cards. I probably don't. Yeah. I probably have scrubs. That that I wish you hadn't said that yet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I I remember having a bunch of Ken Griffey cards and I just none of them. Because I I yeah. In my infinite wisdom as, like, I don't know, a 10-year-old, I was like, oh, yeah, I'll save the really expensive ones and I'll save them somewhere else and just lost that. That's probably exactly what's going to happen to me. Yeah, shit. Um, well, I got good news, PFT. My who's back is our blue check marks. Yeah. We're back. We're they back, get, baby. Elon loves us more than everyone Elon, else. He's an a- a- AWL. Yeah. Shout out, shout out Elon Musk. Um Appreciate you, man. He bought. I guess he bought our blue check marks, and he's personally paying for them out of his bank account. So, so that's that's awesome. I I was so surprised when I saw that I had it back. Me too. I have no idea how it came back. So, Absolutely zero idea. So you texted. And you're like, does anyone else have a blue check mark? I went and looked. I was like, fuck, I do too. Uh, obviously, people shamed us online. But then when I realized what finally happened. So apparently he just gave blue check marks to anyone with over a million followers because they're like Norm McDonald got a blue check mark. Anthony Bourdain got a blue check mark. These are people who are dead. Uh, mm-hmm. And it says like they verified their phone number. Uh, so I'm I mean, am I supposed to apologize for having over a million followers? No, no, you shouldn't. I mean, it's just a fact. It's it's math. Yeah. And Hank is. Are you are, are you mad? No. Do you I, think you won? There's nothing I could care less about than Twitter and blue check marks. Okay, so he's mad. Uh, well, he he also he gave us the blue check marks, but I don't think that we have any of the features. We do. Of the blue check marks. We do. It, oh, we it, do. It, we didn't yesterday, and then when I went on today, I tried to send a tweet, and then it's it has the timer now, like thirty second countdown. That has to be a feature, right? 
Cheap? Yeah, sick. Okay, I'm going to start posting 10 minute videos all the yeah, time. You press submit and then it says sending tweet and you can just press send right away. So we he gave it to us, baby. He he just was like, "Here, I love you guys the most." I've always been a big Elon fan. I've been very consistent on that through the history of this podcast. And shout out our boss Dave Portnoy who bought it and uh Maybe like within five minutes, Elon had given back the blue check marks to everyone with a million followers. It's yeah. Perfect I, timing. I, I texted Dave because I saw when I had mine that he got one himself. And I was like, hey, Elon gave all of us blue check marks. And he was like, wait a second. I just paid for it. Are you getting yours for free? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am. He's like, this is such bullshit. I hope that Dave actually makes a stink about it and tries to get his $8 refunded. Yes. Yes. Um, but yeah, we're back. I, I mean, I guess cash the under but we didn't buy it so it doesn't count right it was forced upon us it was i'm happy for you guys i know you probably lost sleep over it and i'm just happy you know i was actually back. kind of liking the chaos of twitter it was, yeah it was very chaotic and then he just he's just gonna keep i would imagine he's gonna take him away again oh like, yeah, he, yeah it's th sure. that's the fun i actually like the game he's playing where he just gives him back takes him away says oh on this date everyone has to buy it jake buys it and we then they take it back again. Like it's just gonna keep going like this, and I'm I'm in for all of it. Mm -hmm. I wonder if if we change our names, if it would get rid of it again. I think maybe. I don't know though. Because I was updating my profile every single time the defenders won a game to reflect the record when they were undefeated, and it wasn't being taken away then. So there must have been some arbitrary date where he said if you change your name, then it's going away. Yeah. So don't don't yell at us because we didn't buy it. It was forced upon us. But I'm I'm fine that it was forced upon me. If it were my decision, I would have told Elon no, thank you. Um, but he just he made me do it. Yeah, against Stunned my will. My yeah, against my will. So uh, there's nothing we can do. No, it was a non-consensual blue check mark. Yep. Uh, Jake, he vaped or, us. Or your Billy. Uh, liver shots, and also turns out Ryan Garcia had a mole in his fight camp that he posted oh. about after the fight. He said there was a mole in my fight camp. I can't believe this happened. And between that and him saying that the rehydration clause was a little too stringent, so he couldn't fully rehydrate uh, after the weigh-in, and those were his like two excuses on the thing. I can see the rehydration. What about his hair? Thing. Yeah, his hair is too pretty. He, he is way too pretty. He's to way too pretty. Way too pretty. But they said the same thing about Oscar De La Hoya back in the day. Yeah, yeah. But, but they, uh, uh, McGregor was in his locker room after and was like, hey, get the rehydration clause fixed. And I think if you guys go at it again, like you'll definitely win. So I love good boxing excuses. They're yeah. always the best right afterwards. A mole. That's actually I, very I salacious. I, I think that if there's an actual mole in a fight camp and they catch him, you should be allowed to kill that guy. Yeah. Just put him in the ring. No, but like actually from a psychological level, a mole in the fight camp is just it's totally going to mess with the psyche of a fighter. Cause like half of the the cold half of like the cold war leading up to the fight between the two fight camps is like so huge that like having a mole in the camp is gonna definitely shake you even if you yeah know, like what oh he's got like a one two like there's not much you, information you can give but it's just psychologically just so devastating damn damn it's, tough. it's very tough uh Jake oh no you got another oh and one. last uh, last week's back Nate Diaz choked guy yes. out in New Orleans just some random dude got involved with him and he just put him down in like 10 seconds from a crazy, like, like choke hold and just laid him down it, in the street. That guy's got to have better facial recognition, like walking up and being like, wait, that's Nate Diaz. Sorry. I don't want any. It was, it was yeah. so fast that he choked him out and he let him down kind of nicely. It was the most polite it's, way to yeah. neutralize a street fight. Yeah. It, it's, you're not, it's not even like facial recognition. If you see a guy with cauliflower ear, yep. it's just ear recognition. Yeah. If they have cauliflower ear, don't fuck with them. Yep, that's a fact. Uh, Jake, finish us off. Then we got Peter Schrager, NFL Draft. Uh, my who's back is Coach Prime. Colorado spring game this weekend. Yes. Sold out 45,000 people. They had 1,800 people last season. Unreal. Vibes are changing after just – a new chapter for them and yeah off to a great start yeah it was that. cool seeing that i mean we've been to that stadium yeah. obviously for grit week it, that stadium is like one of the coolest stadiums with the mountains in the background it's it colorado being back would be nice my cousin's They've a junior there huge... I'm, I'm pretty jealous of him oh shit he gets he gets he gets the prime prime years yeah because they were because yeah. he could have just had the worst four years yeah I, well i don't I, think you go I to love... that's the thing you don't go to colorado for football so it's just an added bonus right Right, mm -hmm. that's true. I love in that stadium the the giant black area behind the yep. uh, the uprights yep. on the one side, 
Ralphie, underrated mascot. Sean Salam. Football is better. Football is better when Colorado's good. Yep. And I'm excited for them to to have, you know, missed kicks this year and we could just use the pictures of you when you're in full uniform. Yes. That will be fun. Yes. Because they're relevant. That'll be great. So yeah. it'll be, Can't yeah. wait. Or a maid kick, maybe, and we can celebrate the homies. Well, no, it's like we need – it's like signed PFT. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yep. Yeah. Yep. Good point. See, yep. that's the thing. Everything yeah. I say, you guys, you guys, you guys look at it from a ga- negative PFT, you gaslit lens. Yes. I, I gaslit Hank on that one. No, My, it's like me. everything, yeah, everything I say goes into a negative lens. It's like, right. you look through it, a positive lens. Right. Positive. Yeah. That's like what me. I was about to say. Yeah. Like you. Exactly. Right. He's gaslighting you. I know. It's crazy. Into thinking that what he, that, that's crazy, PFT. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. Because the reality is I didn't, I didn't miss any. I nailed them all on my first try. Yeah. Right. Exactly. We we have the videotape. Yeah, we'll yep. put it out today. First cut. I said first first <laughs> song. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's get to Peter Schrager. Great NFL stuff. We have uh, Daniel Jeremiah and Todd McShay coming on Wednesday. So more NFL draft prep draft week. Nothing better. Uh, before we do that, PFT, you got a quick ad. Yes. Before we get to our dear, dear friend, Peter Schrager, he's brought to you by the farmer's dog. Eating processed food for every meal isn't healthy. We all know that. And kibble is subject to multiple rounds of high heat processing, make it an ultra processed food. Try something fresh. Dogs are going to eat anything. They'll eat shoes, toilet paper, garbage, even kibble. But just because they eat it doesn't mean it's healthy food. Well, here's an idea. What if dogs ate real food? Why does dog food have to be dry food or wet food? Why can't it just be food? The farmer's dog is real food. You can feed your dog the farmer's dog. It's real, fresh, healthy food with whole meat and veggies gently cooked in humane grade kitchens to preserve their nutritional value. It's personalized. You tell them about your dog and then they're going to deliver personalized vet developed recipes for as little as two bucks a day. It's pre-portioned meals arrive in pre-portioned ready to serve packs that are conveniently delivered on your schedule. Dog people all across, all across the country have ordered millions of these meals from the farmer's dog. Never been easier to invest in your dog's health with fresh food. Best of all, Here's 50% off. You're welcome. Get 50% off your first box of fresh, healthy food at thefarmersdog.com slash PMT. Plus, there's free shipping. So go to thefarmersdog.com slash PMT. Get 50% off and free shipping, thefarmersdog.com slash PMT. And now here's Pete Schrager. All right. uh, We now welcome on very special guest, good friend of the program. You can see him every single morning on Good Morning Football. He's on paternity leave, though, right now. Or he's back, back. but he's going to then go back yeah. on paternity leave. It is Peter Schrager. We're going to talk some draft. It is draft week. We have uh, all of our guests lined up. We're going to do some some of the mock draft guys on Wednesday. But we wanted to get you on, Schrags, to talk about uh, what these teams are thinking, what you're hearing. But before we do that, is Derrick Henry on the Eagles? Because I, 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 none of us can figure it out. There's no. too many tweets about it. No, no he's not? Not now, no. Um, and that was the first I heard of that this weekend. But I think once you get Howie Roseman and you get big swings everywhere that, you know, and I think it was put out by Akbar, who I love. Great dude. And that's not a usual sourcey thing. Okay, well, that must be close to the situation. He wouldn't come out and just say, oh, all of a sudden today I'm going to be an NFL insider. No, it would have to be pretty firm. Um, but the people I've checked with, that is not the case at the moment. But Tennessee's in – constant revolving door mode right now so uh, nothing would surprise me at the draft but as of right now no can i can i tell you guys what happened to me though this week real quick before we get into the draft i yes. turned i had a birthday on thursday um and i've got three really good friends and they they know what i'm interested in and they can get me a you know something they could buy me a gift anything i wake up in the morning and i have a cameo waiting for me okay i have a cameo waiting for me i've never had a cam no one's bought me a cameo um, for my fantasy football draft, we once had Robert Wolf from Arliss, like very earnestly, like deliver like the draft results. Um, that's the only time I ever used cameo. Frank the Tank Fleming, nice. yes, did a cameo, and he did it so naturally. He's so smoothly. It was almost like he was very comfortable doing it. And I asked, "How much was this?" And they're like, "It was kind of a lot." So I. I would be fascinated to know how many people have had Frank the Tank do birthday cameos and just what kind of second living he is making on the cameo market. Yeah. Well, not yeah. second living. That's that's Frank's full time job. Is Unbelievable. To be a cameo guy. Everything else is icing on top of that. Yeah, he's he's good at it. <laughs> he's a cameo millionaire. I always say, like you, if you walk around the office in August, Frank is just sitting in a just chair doing everyone's draft order. 
He's like, all right, and Pat, you're one. Evan, you're two. Steve, you stink three. And he's just ripping them all off. So he is a cameo millionaire. It was the best. And he botched everyone's pronunciation of all my friends' names. He botched <laughs> everything. And I loved it. And then he got, like, angry at the end. I'm like, I don't even know what he's angry about, but I guess that's his bit. You know, like, all right, sure, yes. you got angry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so, okay, so, yeah, go ahead, PFT. Yeah, Peter, I, I was just wondering, because last time you came on the show, you told us about, you know, the, the story of – Ron Rivera hearing you talking shit about him, pulling you aside yeah. and saying, let's, let's hash this out like men. Are there any coaches right now, right off the bat, Ooh. that you're on their shit list? Whew, and if think. so, would you like to make amends to them on this podcast? Yeah, no. Um, as of right now, I feel like I'm in pretty good shape. I'm going through the, the mental exercise right now. I'm in pretty good shape with all of them. I think I'm in pretty good shape. Uh, picked against the 49ers and picked the Eagles uh, in the NFC championship game. And they, they were well aware of that they weren't thrilled. And then they, you know, that's kind of like an asterisk game because of the injury, but they weren't thrilled for a while, but then that came around and everyone's good. But yes, combine, yeah. I make amends with everyone. I kiss everyone's I, ass. I get up there. Like, hey buddy. And it's all good. You, know? mm-hmm. it's I, you, you should going forward. If you do get on the wrong side of a coach, you should just come on the show and like a, like a hate baton, yeah. just pass it off to us. Be like, yeah, like Jonathan Gannon, like is not happy with me. Just pass. So I'd be like, we've always thought Jonathan Gannon is a fucking moron. We don't. And we'll just go, go way deeper. Yeah, we'll go uh-huh. way deeper and we'll just – we'll take all the heat. Uh, so, yeah, that that's a good question, though. Uh, all right, let's talk draft, though. Yeah. Let's start with one. It, Bryce Young's a Panther, right? Can we so. just – it's just set. We're, we we don't have to worry about it. He's a Panther. There's no – there's no, it, that's yeah, well, what's going to happen, right? 90, 90%, I would say, right now as we record this, yes, he's a Panther, but crazy stuff does happen. And I've seen teams tell me it's 100%, and then three days later it changes. Well, something came in late. So, yes, I will say right now Bryce Young's a Panther. And then it gets really interesting at number two. Yes, yes, yes. So let's let's just do it. Let's. Yeah. I mean, we're hearing now – Uh, it feels like CJ Stroud has like the free fall ability because at number two, there's now rumors that the Texans might not even take a quarterback. Is that all because Will Anderson would be there and D'Amico Ryans is an Alabama guy and a defensive guy and everyone's just doing the, the dot connecting. And then when we get to Thursday night, it's like, oh no, they took a quarterback. Duh. It's really interesting because I still think they might take a quarterback, but at two, they've got a couple of things at play here. Now, Will Anderson is a name that everyone's throwing out because D'Amico and him went to Alabama, but that's not the defensive end type that the Niners had. They always had these big, long, rangy guys, whether it be Bosa and had Armstead and Buckner, and it was a totally different – the four-down defensive lineman is Tyree Wilson. That's the guy. And the highest-paid defensive line coach in the league is this guy, Chris Kosarek, who is – at the Niners and he's like a screamer and he's awesome. And he is the guy who teaches all these guys in the defensive line in San Francisco. And he's a Texas tech guy and he would know Tyree Wilson and D'Amico and him obviously are tight. So I'm not just saying because one guy went to Alabama Nick Saban looks at D'Amico Ryan and says, you know what, young man, you should take Will Anderson. He's taking Will Anderson. Um, I would add that their GM Casario last year at this time, everyone had them, taking Sauce Gardner three or going with an offensive lineman like Ike Aquanu, someone. And he took Derek Stingley at three and he's got a guaranteed contract. And at 15, I think they took Kenyon Green, who no one had. He's an offensive guard. So like the Texans are a perfect team for us at number two, because anyone who tells you that they know exactly what they're doing, they're full of it. Um, yeah, which makes the draft be, really fun. That would be shocking to me. Just, just at a human level, you. if a Texas tech defensive player, went number two overall that'd be crazy that that would yeah. be like a complete that would that would fuck with my mind to no to no end it's not what they're and, known for no, no. It, it seems like it seems like cj stroud is falling because um i is it all because of the s2 test no because no when no. the panthers no. traded up everybody was like cj stroud he's the guy he's the guy so what what is i've heard about the s2 test what is the s2 test and yeah. uh, how much does it actually factor into play who, who these guys are picking? I don't think the S2 test is – and I don't think C.J. Stroud is plummeting. I talk to teams, and a lot of the teams have C.J. Stroud number one or two on their board. So he, he might go later than expected, but it's not like he's having some free fall out of the first round or anything. Stroud, okay, the S2 test, I do a podcast, and I had on the guy a couple – weeks ago before it became this bubbling up thing because I had been hearing from a lot of teams and half the teams in the NFL use this thing. I think it's two teams per division. And then like, because of the contract that they have, they don't want to use more than two teams per division. They want to like just contract two teams per division. So you could connect the dots, which ones use them. Um, 
The guy's name was Brandon Ally. He is one of the co-founders. And it's basically, it's, it's, you know, the wonder look for years was like train A leaves the station at 3 p.m. Train B leaves the station at 3.20 p.m. If train A, you know, it's an IQ. The doctor is the mother, those type of things. Exactly. And it's like an yeah, IQ yeah. test and you have four minutes and it's a one to 40 scale. This thing is all about how you process information and how quickly you can process the information. So you basically sit in this like virtual reality machine for 45 minutes and there's objects flying at you and you've got to yell out the objects. So if you're a defensive back and you're taking the S2 cognition test, they can do it where there's like nine things going on the screen at once and you're supposed to spot out you know, you know uh, image A, B, C, D, E, F, where are they in what order? If you're a quarterback, it's quick processing. Okay, this is covered up. What's that? So it doesn't, it's not an IQ test. It doesn't grade your intelligence. It grades how quick you can process information in real time. So the numbers that got leaked out there, like everyone's like, Bryce Young got 100. I actually heard there was a quarterback and it wasn't from these guys. It was from another team that graded higher than Bryce Young. And he's not a day one pick, but it, the Stroud thing, uh, you know, Bob McKinn, who is um, Bob McKinn, who's a really like, you know, respected journalist, saw that he had scores. I don't have the actual numbers. I don't know what Stroud got. I do know Bryce Young was exceptional. I do know Brock Purdy last year was exceptional. Um, and I do know there were other players in recent years that have, you know, gone on to great success who have high S2 scores. Then again, that comes from the company. So I don't know what to believe and what doesn't. Like, oh, yeah. And you hear this stuff and the company would say, well, we didn't put those numbers out, but I can't imagine how those get out otherwise. Yeah, it, right. sound, it sounds like Kyler Murray would be awesome at that. It's just like living in the metaverse. Bum, 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 yeah. Bum, 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 bum. yeah, playing a video game. What do you make Wait. of people being upset that the Cardinals went out to be at Kyler Murray's statue unveiling? There were a lot of people in the league who were like, see, that's why they're the Cardinals. Instead of grinding tape, they were at a you know, Norman, <laughs> Oklahoma. And my thing, it's like that kid has been so beleaguered and dragged through the mud. Like, I think it's kind of nice to have all those people. It was their head coach, offensive coordinator, PR guys, their GM, all go to Norman, Oklahoma on an April for a weekend to, to support their quarterback. I think it goes a it lot was way. nice. Yeah, it, it's nice. It was I, nice. I, I, yeah, go ahead. I, I, I just thought that Steve Kime wasn't allowed out of the state of Arizona. That's what shocked me about it. But <laughs> besides that, it was great. It, it, it was nice. And also, I it, it's so weird sometimes when injuries happen later in the season. Like, I have to keep reminding myself, Kyler Murray's not going to start the season yeah, next year. It's like out so, a couple weeks, yeah. yeah. And a new staff, it's nice that they're like, hey, this is our guy, even though he's going to be out. I had one other CJ Stroud question because yeah. – it was the uh, reason why we had a bub off online between uh, Ryan Clark and uh, yeah. Brady Quinn. Uh, very fun whenever two media members do that. Especially, two, especially two ex-players. Like, right. we don't get that. Usually it's just angry guy on Twitter who writes for publication A versus angry guy on Twitter who works on, you know, publication D. This was two right. ex-players, like, getting in their feelings about C.J. Stroud's, you know, interviews. Go on. Yeah, so so – the the genesis of the argument was the rumor that C.J. Stroud ghosted the Manning Passing Academy uh, last year. And I think it's, you know, this is the time of year where everyone just throws out red flags yeah. and smoke screens. I, I honestly, I, and you could tell me I'm way off, but, like, most of these teams know who they're going with. They've already kind of made up their mind what their draft board looks like. So any of this new information, it's either they've already known it and it hasn't affected them or it just won't affect them, period. But my question to you is, if C.J. Stroud doesn't go two, Cardinals are at three, they, they could trade, but they don't pick a quarterback because they went to Kyler Murray's mm -hmm. statue unveiling. Mm -hmm. Now you're at the Colts at four, and the one guy who probably, if he has a bone to pick, is Peyton Manning, who probably still has Jim Irsay's ear. Is that in any world a possibility that C.J. Stroud ghosting a passing academy could ev eventually like affect his draft just because it landed on the Colts and Peyton Manning's like, hey, I want I want them to take Will Levis, not C.J. Stroud. No. Okay. All right. So I would say so. None of it matters. None of it matters. I would say uh, if if that item, which I think, you know, Brady, he didn't go to the passing academy. That's for sure. But I don't know if he goes to them. I think they're obviously. A lot's been said, and again, not from the Mannings, not from Brady Quinn, not from, from what I heard was he did give them a proper heads up that he wasn't going to be there and he was at Ohio State that week. And it, I don't think the Mannings were up in arms over it by any means. Um, I also think the Manning influence on the Indianapolis Colts as a franchise might be being blown out of proportion just a little bit because I've heard that, yes, they like Will Levis. I've also heard that there's people in the building who like Stroud. I hear, and we're recording this early in the week, 
There are people in the building who like Richardson more than both those guys. So yeah. as we sit here and we're talking about this, it's to me those three names, and I think they are going to go quarterback. But if it's Richardson on Thursday and Rich Eisen's mouth drops and we all go nuts, we're like, I wouldn't be shocked because I've heard there's, there's some real fans for Anthony Richardson in the Colts building too. But I don't think okay. I don't think Peyton Manning's pulling any puppet strings with the Indianapolis Colts. I I have just too much respect for an entire front office, the GM, and as much as Ursay respects Manning, I don't think he's making that pick. Okay, I like that answer just because we like to live in like the fan fiction world of uh, so do I. you know NFL fandom. <laughs> yeah. So that's like a fun connect your dots that I I appreciate you being like no. That's stupid uh, because it is. But uh, based off that question, you you know everyone in the league. You talk to all these guys. How like are there are they set with their draft board? There's no last minute scouting. If a story comes out, like obviously we have you know when someone has a, a yes, week legal bomb, thing. Yes. Yeah, right on, on draft night. But other than that, like it's kind of set, right? I'd say up until this weekend, it wasn't fully set. And I'd say okay. by the time you get to Monday, Tuesday. You look at your scouts, you look at the info, what you get the feeling of, you take a deep breath. But everyone was working on it this past weekend. And like the Cardinals guys talked to some folks there and it, like their comment was, yeah, we were all together on a flight to Norman, Oklahoma and back. You don't think we talked about the draft at all during that time? Like everyone right. is, is all hands on. And most of the guys were in the office this weekend, not at kids uh, sporting events or whatever else. So coaches, front offices, this was the weekend to kind of firm it all up. And Got just it. so you know, if – it happens that the Colts do not pick him and they choose somebody else. If they don't choose uh, CJ Stroud, we are still going to say that yes. it's because oh, yeah. he did not attend the passing game. And it's also a, Peyton, <laughs> the Manning family influence goes far beyond the Colts. Uh, Archie Manning run, runs the NFL. He's the, the shadow commissioner. He, right. he pulls all the strings going on. <laughs> uh, Big Cat brought up the, uh, the Laramie Tunsil gas mask yeah. uh, bong that, that got dropped on draft night. Um, there are some legal issues for some of these guys that are kind of looming out there early in, in the first round. Jalen Carter might be, I don't know, some people have said, said that he's the best player mm -hmm. uh, in the draft. Are people scared at all about yeah. the legal situation in Georgia? And is that a possibility that it's going to affect his draft status? Or I've his heard, draft stock, I should say. Yeah, I've heard from a couple of teams who are not in the top 10 that, you know, Carter is not their guy. So they wouldn't even take him. If you, Then again, Drew Rosenhaus has been doing this for 30 years. He even said it like if he's not sending his guy on to interviews uh, outside the top 10, Jalen Carter, for all intents and purposes, is going to go to the top 10. And the way that the draft shakes out, there are so many teams that need that player. So like the Seahawks at five, Jalen Carter is a perfect fit for them. Um, you go right down to the Eagles at 10. Jalen Carter would be a perfect fit in that defense. And with them having the luxury of two first round picks and also all those guys in an NFC championship game, like Eagles and Jalen Carter would make a lot of sense. Lions have six and 18. If the Lions can't get Anderson or Wilson and they're looking at six and it's like, do we take a corner or do we take this guy, Jalen Carter? And we trust that in our building, all the gambling stuff aside from this past weekend, like in our building, we've got the right guys and Dan Campbell and Aaron Glenn, like they can coach him up. Um, I, I'd be shocked, shocked if Jalen Carter fell out of the top 10. Yeah. It's, it's also very easy for a team that's picking like 19 to say, you know what? If he falls to us, we're out. We're not. We're, we're not going to touch that guy. Precisely. It's like me and saying like, I, if Emily Rajkowski asked me yeah. out, I'd be like, you know what? I got dinner plans with my cousin. You that's know? right. Yeah. If if Emrat was to be interested in you, you're good. I'm all right. I'm out. My I'm cousin. out. Yeah. I'm, I'm off fine. the record. I, yeah, yeah. Let off yeah. the record. Don't put yeah. it to me. But yes, off the record. <laughs> um, I would also say with Jalen, their Georgia guys have been very positive on him, and I think they rely on that a lot too. And that's the, you think well, every college is positive on their player, but apparently Kirby Smart and all those defensive coaches who are really valued around the league have been like, this is a good dude. And yeah. so whether he is or he isn't, I don't know him, but that's, I, he doesn't have the, the school being the ones to bury him, which we've seen in the past too. And yeah. And someone will take him. Like you said, like we were laughing the other uh, week. Uh, there was a report that teams were nervous uh, about Stetson Bennett's off field stuff. And it's like, well, no, he just wasn't going to get drafted yeah. in the top five rounds. Like if he was a top five quarterback, he would still get drafted as a top five quarterback. You, like the, this is just how the NFL works. Sure. Yes. Right. Um, all right. So uh, you brought up the Seahawks. Yeah. Would it be crazy if the Seahawks took a quarterback, no. especially if these things drop? Because I think people, a lot of times when we, we were in the off season, the N NFL, you see the contract get tweeted by, by Schefter <laughs> or Rapport, and then you go on with your, your life. Yeah. Geno Smith signed a one year deal. 
He signed a one year deal with you know he can he can make more, but the Seahawks are not tied to him long term. So it feels like they are a sleeping team out there that's going to take possibly take a quarterback and and kind of upheaval the draft. Yeah, so it's a one year deal essentially for twenty seven million. They also signed Drew Locke for just one year for essentially four million. So you're saying your quarterback room is thirty million dollars for this year, and then it's kind of wide open after that. So it goes two ways, right? The first way is Seattle. This was a gift. They didn't expect to have this pick, but the Russell Wilson trade, it's like a gift in their lap. They're not going to be in the top five anytime soon because they've got such a young, good roster. So take the quarterback while he's there, especially if one drops. The other side of it is, wow, the NFC is wide open. Uh, The NFC West is wide open. What if we get an impact player that puts us over the top this year and we trust Geno? They love Geno, but to your point, he's 32 years old. He hasn't started... And before last season for eight seasons, he signed four one-year contracts up to this one. Um, I would not be shocked if they went quarterback at five, but I would think five is such a rich draft pick and they are so loaded with young players from the draft last year and the year before that if like Jalen Carter, Will Anderson, or Tyree Wilson is there, like they're going to go with the young defensive pass rusher. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So who is, uh, you know, the Cardinals obviously most likely to trade, Mm -hmm. but what else are you hearing and yeah, if they can, who who else is like lingering to possibly trade up? And because that's the best part about the draft, yeah. when a team just jumps and you're like, "Holy fuck, where'd they come from?" Uh, what is it like? What team is the most aggressive that you know, uh, or even things you've heard like they're eyeing it if they can find their spot? Yeah, I love when you hear that chime and it's like the, the yeah. pick is in, and then the the, yeah. lo- the logo changes. Yeah, it's yeah. the best. It's, it's the great. best. It's great. I think last year there was. I could be wrong. I think 12 in the first round, 12 trades, which is insane. Um, So Tennessee has an interesting situation. Tannehill's in a similar deal as Geno where it's like he's under contract. Malik Willis last year was a project. And then when they needed him most, they signed Josh Dobbs off the street to play in the week 18 game against the Jacksonville Jaguars. So I'm not sure their future with Malik Willis. And they have a new general manager who kind of has a blank slate on things. They just have so many needs at wide receiver, at offensive line, at other places. I, Rand Carthon's his name. He comes from the 49ers, but he was with the Rams before that. Great dude. Uh, he was Maurice Carthon's kid, if you remember the Giants from like the 90s. Um, awesome evaluator of talent, but also might want to put his stamp on things. And I, they, again, we talk about connecting the dots. Vrabel's an Ohio State guy. If Stroud is there at three, maybe they go and they make a big play. They go and get C.J. Stroud. They have their quarterback. They feel pretty good about it. Or they stay at 11, and one of these guys will be there at 11, and they could be pretty content. But I I think quarterback makes a lot of sense for Tennessee, and they're one of those sweet spot teams. You move up a few places. Another team that I would keep an eye on, and I don't know if they would be able to move all the way up to three, but like Kirk Cousins' contract is done after this year. It's a one-year, $35 million deal, essentially. If the Vikings are looking for the future and one of these guys starts slipping past 10, past 11, past 12, uh, again, new front office, new GM, new head coach. I mean, they're second-year guys. Maybe they move up and they go and make a move and get one of them. Um, I wouldn't be shocked with that either. Okay. So we, I like we, that. we talk a lot on the show about the commanders, probably too much for any show yeah. about the Washington commanders, but yeah. there's a real football and draft implication in the ownership change that's happening right now. Um, when it comes to the draft, are they going to have to operate differently at any level uh, because they don't know who the new owner is going to be? That's like Dan's on the way out. There's a new guy coming in. They don't have his stamp of approval yet to make any significant moves, uh, you know, salary wise or making big splashes. Is that going to affect how the Washington commanders uh, approach the draft this year? I think naturally, I would think whether they would approach it that way or not, there's a feeling of a little bit of, hey, let's win now. It does us all a favor. Let's get an impact guy who can contribute right away. So I don't see them taking a project quarterback. I don't see them taking a guy that like Hendon Hooker, who you have to wait a year on. I think. They're looking to compete this year with new owners coming who are going to be reanalyzing all this. And Ron's been through this. When Tepper came in, it was like, all right, new owner. And, okay, I got to deliver. So I have to think he and Martin Mayhew and their staffs are looking to get an impact player, whether that's, you know, and you say, well, they have Brian Robinson, but, like, does that mean it's Bijan Robinson? Because you know that he right away can make an impact. Is it a receiver to go with Dotson and McLaurin where you're like, all right, we got to get more offense? 
uh, or is it just a corner that's going to start right away? But I don't see quarterback for them. I don't see any project players. I think naturally they're going to want to get guys that can play right away. And the guy I put in my mock draft and I got feedback from a lot of people being like, he might not even be the first one off the board is the Utah tight end Dalton Kincaid mm-hmm. who again, I'd be lying if I said I, t- I watched a ton of Dalton Kincaid during he's the awesome. season. I did. And, but yeah. you know what? You watch all the tape and all the stuff and you hear some words and he's not Travis Kelsey, but he's a really good tight end and the enemy comes in and he knows how to use a tight end. So that might make some sense. Okay. So uh, what's the one team and player you've heard over and over? Cause it always feels like when we go in the draft, there's like, uh, one or two picks that everyone can kind of telegraph. It's like, yeah. this guy's going to be here and this team is going to take him. Yeah, that's why this draft is interesting. So I always have certain teams up top that like I feel pretty confident that I know, like whatever it was, and if it was through Cliff or Con, whatever, I've I've had the Arizona Cardinals for the last few years. I just knew where they were going, knew their board, and and was felt pretty good. Uh, time and time again, I've had got – because Houston's at two and no one in the league knows what they're doing and because Arizona's at three and has basically put up a billboard to anyone in the league saying, come and get it, you can't in good faith say, all right, well, I know what Seattle's doing. I know what Detroit's doing because there's going to be such a mix-up of the I, I, you know, and I, I'm curious to see because Peter King on Monday mornings has a good article every year, draft week, and he's got good stuff too. I'm curious to see what he says because I have made all the calls over the past few days and to a man, every single one of these GMs is asking me what I'm hearing, but also saying of all the years, this is the least predictable up top because of so much possible action and intrigue. And with two, three, and four, no one having a you know a dartboard pick like, oh, that's the guy for them. It makes five, six, seven, eight, and beyond pretty much irrelevant. This show is brought to you by BetterHelp. Getting to know yourself can be a lifelong process, especially because we're always growing. We're always changing. Therapy is all about deepening your self-awareness and understanding because sometimes we don't know what we want or why we react the way we do until we talk through things. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist that can take you on that journey of self-discovery from wherever you happen to be. I personally spoke with a therapist this week. You guys all know I'm dealing with some stuff in my life, dealing with loss. I talked to a therapist this week, had a convenient 45-minute session, got some things off my chest, She taught me different ways to cope, different strategies to get myself out of stressful situations, feeling better. And if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire. You get matched with a licensed therapist, and you switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash PMT today. Get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp.com dot com slash pmt and now here's more pete schrager yeah we all know that jared goff is the quarterback for the lions right they're not going to take quarterback right i don't think everybody loves jared six or 18 i don't think they're going quarterback that's what i that's my intel yeah good good he's a great player great player we like jared right we like jared yeah Yeah. no jared's our great friend what what about um jsn stone cold lock first wide receiver off the board Uh, him or addison and then I know a lot of teams really like the kid Johnston from TCU, who's a bigger body. He's like six foot two. Um, the, the wide receiver class, and it's nothing against those guys. They can go on to be amazing. But just coming into this thing, there are no blue chippers. There are no top 10 picks. It, it is a different deal than last year where there was like six names that there was a run on them. And they were taken basically one by one by one by one, starting with Drake London. There's none of that this year. All right. So uh, we're, we're with, draft overall, by the way. Yeah. Like, Three yeah. really it's like star players, Bryce Young, B. John Robinson, Jalen Carter, and then maybe Will Anderson makes that. And ty- then beyond that, like it, there's a lot of good players, but it's not the draft where it's, okay, Micah Parsons and, you know, this guy and that guy and Jamar Chase. There's none of that. The, yeah, the, the B. John Robinson is interesting because – it feels like everyone has learned their lesson. Don't draft court, don't draft running backs like very early in the draft because a lot of these guys don't get second contracts. Like it just it's not a position that you want to spend that type of draft capital in. Uh, I do think the Bears there's a chance they take him. I will be mad and then I'll become the biggest B. John Robinson fan yeah. ever. I will completely be a hypocrite in that respect. Uh, so I, I like. Do you think he could go as high? What's the highest you've heard B. John Robinson going? I've heard, eight I've to heard, Falcons? Eight to Falcons does make sense, but they I know it sounds like, all right, here's this 
transcendent generational talent, but they had a fifth round pick at a BYU, uh, you know, Tyler Algier who ran for a thousand yards last year. It's like, do you really need that? Um, 10 to the Eagles is just interesting because it's a luxury. They have yep. so much talent and it's like, they just invested in Jalen hurts. Give this guy the ball for four years. Look, we're talented everywhere else. It's almost a gift that we have this 10th overall pick and they can make that like 10th makes sense to me, to them. Um, but I've heard Robinson and Gibbs, the running back from Alabama, are both first round picks. I just don't know where they're going to go. And that's kind of the fun of it. But yeah, I think anywhere from six, six to 15 for B. John Robinson. It's like crazy. Detroit, if you go six. But like, Detroit I, has Montgomery and Swift. So I don't know why they would do that. But I'm just giving you that, you know, that range. Right. right. It's yeah. crazy. I, and then, I feel and then like we did learn our lesson. Yeah, we, we, we have. Ha, has The market hasn't overcorrected yet either. I think the market has just like perfectly corrected to understand the value of, of running backs, especially Look. as Kit said, it like per, pertains to their contract. Are there any other running back? Like who's the second running back off the board and when do you expect him to go? Gibbs out of Alabama, Jameer Gibbs. I think he'll go late first. I could see him going Giants, Cowboys, um, Chiefs at 31. Like and he's he's really talented. He's compared to Kamara, and that's it's not like it's some crazy hyperbole. He's really good. The the thing with it, like you know, Saquon was offered 12 and a half million dollars at the bye week for multiple years, said no, goes to you know the contract negotiations. Daniel Jones signs the long term deal. They franchise Saquon. He's making 10 million now, and it's like no one's crying for Saquon. It just it just stinks. It's just what it is. Austin Eckler goes on Chris Long's show and says, like, I want to be traded. There's like tumbleweeds around the league. Like no one even like flinches and Eckler's yeah. amazing. So when Isaiah Pacheco and Jarek McKinnon are carrying the load in a Super Bowl, it's hard to make the argument for a, a running back in the top 10. Yeah. yeah. It's, you mentioned how this draft class is so weird compared to some of the others. You don't have to answer this right now, but it would be it'd be awesome if we could go back and we could put together your your starting lineup on offense and defense based off just draft class and see which draft class over the last 10 years Let's would go. win. We should put in a bracket, actually. That's a good idea for Billy. We should have Billy do a bracket and then yeah. have the results already, but then seed them so they can square off. Yeah, that'd yes, be good. Exactly, yeah. And then he can do like hypothetical matchups. Well, this guy's a great <laughs> left tackle, but he would get his lunch eaten against this one particular guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We will we'll do that. We will absolutely do that. Um, it's also interesting. I mean, I think it's just the norm now because uh, five quarterbacks will go in the first round. Can I say that confidently? Uh, four. I don't know about Hooker. I you don't know four. about? Okay. I think four. I, at first, like I put Hooker all the way up at like 11 in my mock draft last week, and a lot of guys in the league were like, yeah, that's, a, that's rich. Um, I think the best thing for Hooker would be a team trading back into the first round, getting the fifth year on him so you have this redshirt year with him, and you still get four more years. But it is crazy that we went, you know, it was there, there's obviously the uh the the famous Dan Marino John Elway draft that was six quarterbacks in the first mm -hmm. round. But other than that, it's it's there was five quarterbacks in the ninety nine draft and then the twenty eighteen draft. Then there was another one what two years ago? Yeah, it's so it's now yeah, so we're gonna have like three three of the last five years there'll be five quarterbacks drafted in the first round. That's just what the league is now, I guess. I guess. And like next year, you know, and again it's early and I remember saying no, it's never too early. Don't say I that. Mean, you, I we actually start putting out our mock drafts for next year should. before this draft. Before, yeah. even yeah. beforehand. Um, but I remember the year before Matt Barkley was drafted in the fourth round. Everyone the year before was like, "Well, you could pass on a quarterback because Matt Barkley is going to be number one overall." You know, like it just <laughs> you don't know. Um, right. And I think Matt Barkley is still playing, by the way. So who am I? Shut up. You know. Yeah, but the um, next year's class is a kid from North Carolina. May there's yep. obviously kid out of USC and then there's a guy up at Washington that everyone loves too that those three could be better than all these guys you know so who knows yeah it's true all right so uh without burning any of your sources yeah, and pissing yeah. anyone off yeah. uh I I have a long-standing feeling in all of sports not just the NFL but a lot of there's a lot of front offices where the job is to keep the job and by mm -hmm. that I mean they just want to do whatever's safe to make sure that they can keep doing the same job over and over, not take big swings, yep. not draft someone that then everyone's like, what an idiot. What, on the on the flip side, what is the one or two front offices that you're confidently like, they will take the big swing, they will be aggressive, they are not worried about their job, uh, they're here to try to win Super Bowls? Yeah, uh, always Mickey Loomis with the New Orleans Saints. Yep. Does not give a shit about mock drafts. He's been there since the year 2000. He's built Super Bowl winner and Peyton's gone, but Mickey's still there. Um, 
there at the end of the first round. Remember, they traded, you know, to get Chris Olave last year. They traded up to get Marcus Davenport a few years ago. He is the most fearless and is, you know, has, has carte blanche. So he's one. The other team that I think could take a really big swing if they wanted to move up to get their guy or to just take the guy at 10 is the Philadelphia Eagles. I don't think um, anyone's got more, you know, you talk about a pendulum swinging, whether it's, you know, over the time, but right now I feel like Harry Roseman has the cards in his favor. And I feel like they got so close to a Super Bowl that he can make the justification to the owner and to the fans that, Hey, I felt like this player, we had to go get him, and that's going to put us, you know, to win a Lombardi this year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good answers. I My, didn't think uh, of the saints. Well, saints are like irrelevant because they're at the yeah. end of the first round. Yeah, but no, you're right. But they, that's they, what they do. do. Yeah, they do do that. My favorite tradition on draft day is uh, Roger Goodell getting booed and he's mm-hmm. become smart recently. He's kind of leaned into a little bit, but he also he likes it. He likes it. He likes it a little bit too much. But my favorite part is when uh, when sometimes he'll bring out the human shields to protect himself yeah. from the boo. So <laughs> he'll have either the troops on stage when he comes out, or he'll he'll have like little kids yeah. that get walked out with him. PFT, PFT, you gotta you gotta say he usually has a troop with like an amputee that he yeah. goes oh, all the no. way. Yeah, yeah, they're they're, yeah. Ca- they're capital T troops. They are yes, they are yes, the yes. troops that he brings out. What do you think he's gonna do to shield himself Ooh. from? He, he could honestly. I, I got just it. Thought I got it. I know it already. Okay, I, 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 I don't you go know first, it. and then I, I, I just, I just hit myself with it. But you go first. Okay, Kansas City. This is a no-brainer. You've got all these celebrities that are like beloved. You've got Jason Sudeikis is a Kansas City guy, beloved. You've got uh, Eric Stone Street, Kansas City, beloved. You've got David Koechner. Uh, you go right down the list. Paul, Paul Rudd. Rudd. All these guys. They're all beloved. There is yep. a, a, a nice win here if he comes out with some of my buddies and he's out there with all these celebrities and no one's going to be booing David Koechner or Jason Sudeikis. I mean, Jason Sudeikis right now is 100% approval rating. I, I don't think anyone's booing them, especially in Kansas City. That's how you play that card. Okay. I, I agree with you, but I actually think you, you're right on the money. There are so many well-loved celebrities there. What he should do, he should take the one guy that they'll probably boo – and bring him out, and okay. then he'll be like, oh, they're booing. He should go out on stage with Jackson Mahomes and have Jackson Mahomes <laughs> record a live TikTok <laughs> yeah. on stage right in front of Goodell, and then he'll be like, they're booing this guy, not me. It's perfect. It's perfect. Jack, you go, take it away, Jackson. And yeah. he goes, and it does it, and I would love it. It'd be great. And, and for the record, we're Jackson Mahomes fans. So am I. Wait, we, we, met Jackson Mahomes. we think Wait, he's hilarious. Him. I met him at the AFC Championship game last year. I was on the field before the game, and uh, I'm, I got the credential. And I'm acting like a big shot, and there he is. I, I shot my shot. I went up to him. I said, yo, bro, good to meet you. He's like, thanks, man. It was cool. He was great. I loved him. And so now, I mean, everyone wants to knock him. I think that's such low-hanging fruit. Can you imagine yeah. being Jackson Mahomes? That's a tough life, man. Well, it's uh, also yeah. it's also a very funny thing because Patrick Mahomes is like what everyone should aspire to be in terms of like the most loyal – family member right like yeah. he's ride or die with his family why, why are we criticizing that wait i'll add one more because yeah. i was thinking jackson holmes as well what if we had jackson come out and britney and britney had a champagne bottle and in the champagne bottle was cash <sighs> so she just sprays the whole crowd with cash Perfect. everyone gets some cash Perfect. i still they, think in kansas city though i think they like jackson I no think yeah they like of course britney, so i don't even know if you get those booze that way i feel like no, they, we, they're fan we'll get cheers we get cheers. cheers um all right i had i had one last question uh peter this has been awesome rowback question rhoback.com they have new shorts for the summer i love uh, michael rubin asking about rowback like yes yeah. like the competitive like signals were like the yeah. synapses like, by, by the that. way are you yeah. hanging with charlie d'amelio and slicing your finger <laughs> yeah i think when he heard us say rowback he's like I I gotta stay up twenty hours a day working now. Yeah, this right. they're done. I respect uh, so, all of that guy. Yeah. He's Ro- gonna be all of our bosses at some point, so I'm yes, just gonna yep. shut up. Yep. Yes. Uh, Roback.com. R H O B A C K. dot com. Use code take twenty percent off your first purchase. New shorts. Uh, they have joggers. They have polos, Q zips, hoodies, everything. Uh, last question, not about the draft. Okay. The Lions thing that we mentioned, the gambling issue. Mm-hmm. What exactly happened? And if I if I can understand it correctly, they just made a bet on another sport in mm-hmm. the Lions facility. That's, what, 
There should be a rule in the NFL that, like, if you lose the bet, you can't be also suspended. That's like that should be double jeopardy. Like, if he lost, that was the thing with Calvin Ridley. Like, the dude was losing parlays. You shouldn't get suspended for losing parlays. Mm-hmm. If he was winning, different. But wh- so, what happened, and how did it go down, and how many people ended up getting fired? I think, oh, I think six guys got hit with it, and two of them are still on the team. I think some of the other guys got cut, and then. Jamison Williams is just six games and another guy's just six games. The way I read it into it, and look, I work for the NFL, so I have to take a full um, you know, HR, mandatory gambling policy. I don't participate in fantasy football. I don't participate in um, March Madness tournaments, and I cannot go into a sports book and place, you know, bets as just an employee of the NFL and the players. You know, everyone on Twitter was like, that's such BS because, you know, they've got they're in bed with all these different gambling companies. I think the players have to get similar training. They're well aware of it. And the rule is in the facility, they cannot bet on other sports and they can't log in and they have activation. You know, you could find the IP address and there's all sorts of ways that they can track that. Um, I believe Miles Austin, who was a Jet, the former Cowboys receiver, was working for the Jets. He, too, got stung with that during the season placing a bet on his phone in the facility on a, another sport. And, uh, you know, the people there were like, I, you know, I didn't even know that was what, but okay. Like it's what it is. The rules, the rule, um, the players are, are signed on through the CBA that they know the deal. I think, I don't know if I'm speaking out of term, but like they have to go through rigorous training on the gambling policy. So if they did not know it and they get it, like, I guess they got to deal with the consequences. So can you text Roger? Uh, Cause I know you're pl- close personal friends with him and just tell him that like, if you, if the, if it's a losing bet, they shouldn't get suspended. They should also release all the bets. Like I want to see what Jameson Williams. Yeah. I want to see if Jameson Williams was like, he was betting on the reds on a Tuesday afternoon. Yeah. Cause like if he lost that bet, he should not be suspended. That's my Your thought that is, is they've, my already, take. they've already lost the money. Why Correct. Have they, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, you can't, it. it's double jeopardy. I, I think <laughs> legally jeopardy. it is. You're yeah. already getting it slapped is. on the wrist. You've lost. You've <laughs> lost. Don't also take away their jobs. Yeah. I, you know, the NFL is uh, pretty strict on the gambling thing. And, I, and they got a beating from all the people and the critics online and all the uh, like, ex players. Like, no, wait, hold on a second. You're going to tell me you're going to take the draft. I think I think it's a really serious issue, and they are well versed. Uh, the Players Association knows the rules, and I think that's just the deal. Okay, uh, Peter, I, okay. I have one last last question. This is from uh, our our good friend Memes. He works on the show. He does. Uh, yeah, he runs the the social for us. Constantly doing um, Islanders hockey on Twitter, though. Okay, but go yeah. on. Let's go. Yeah. Yep, yep. Huge Isles <laughs> fan, huge Jets fan as well. So he wanted right. to ask you uh, if you personally would trade the thirteenth overall pick. For a 39 year old Aaron Rodgers, I would not. Okay, I would not. Is I I have no I have no assurance that he's with me next year or the year after that. I would need some sort of um, conditional situation. I wouldn't give the first round pick for a thirty nine year old quarterback, whoever it is. Um, and in Rodgers' case, when you say that you're ninety percent retired before going into the darkness retreat, I think it's kind of tricky for a team to give up a first round pick. When you hear that yeah. on thing, but they trust me, the Jets want Rodgers. They cannot wait to have Rodgers. They will get Rodgers. My prediction is uh, night two, it probably goes down Ooh. and it might involve one of those, the 42nd or 43rd pick, which they have back to back and then some other conditional stuff beyond that. Okay. And, and, yeah. It's so interesting because it, it seems like neither team has the leverage in this situation. They don't. Because exactly. because Aaron's told the uh, Packers he doesn't want to play for them, so the Jets know that he is not going to be a Green Bay Packer, and the Jets uh, the, the they don't Packers, want Zach Wilson. Yeah, the Packers right. know that, so it seems like it, like Aaron Rodgers is the one with leverage, and his ultimate leverage is actually just walking away from fifty million dollars, which isn't that much leverage either. So it's like a non leverage game. Yeah, and I think the interesting thing is why I mentioned that 42nd and 43rd pick. It's like the second you get to night three of the draft, you're losing an entire year's worth of draft picks that you could trade the Packers. Like the value of next year's picks is way less than this year's because they want their picks to play next season. Like they want to right. feel. They don't want these fictional, you know, picks from way down the road. So if they don't trade one of those second round picks, like this thing could drag on even more. Um, I just I just want the Packers to take a wide receiver in the first round so badly. I think they might. Dude, I think they might. Oh, think, it would be it the just funniest be like thing ever. In the, yeah, it would be a spite pick. I want to see a spite pick. The way it works, like, truly, 
the way it's working out, like I think all those receivers could be available at 15. They have never taken a receiver so or a tight end in all of his years in the first round. And I think they might take a receiver or a tight end. And yeah, you know what? <laughs> I, this doesn't yes. come from the Packers, but like the the word I've got from a lot of different people was like, "Look, he goes on McAfee. I thought he was pretty eloquent. I thought he was pretty good. The Jets loved it. Every, everyone here. When you don't thank the GM, when you don't thank the current president, like, all right, like little things like that, we'll we'll take a receiver and we'll make sure yeah. Jordan Love is going to have as much success as possible next season. That would yeah. be awesome. Yeah, he might be whatever whatever receiver they take. I might be the only Packer I ever root for in my entire Can life. Can you imagine being Rodgers in the pandemic? It's 2020, and you're like right on the cusp. You just won the MVP, and they trade up, and you're like, oh shit, we're getting Brandon Ayuk, or we're getting Jordan, Jet, whatever it was. And they took a quarterback. It's yeah. not, I mean, in hindsight, it's wild. It's wild. It's he's wild. like trying to change the channel from the draft, and Fauci's <laughs> on the news and going back yeah. to it. He's like, God he's damn, this is just chamber. not my night. Not his yeah. night. Fauci, <laughs> Fauci in the Packers front office did not, not his favorite folks. You know? Yes, yes. Um, all right. Well, thank you so much, Peter. We appreciate it. Uh, Good luck on paternity leave after the draft. That was a sneaky genius move by you. You went paternity leave, then NFL draft, then a little more paternity leave. Left yourself a little something. Broke it That's up. Smart. A little, little meat on yeah. the bone. Yeah. I right. found out just... Sex. Yeah, yeah it's awesome. I found out a few. <laughs> <laughs> I found out a few weeks ago that uh, we have like like four month paternity leave. Really? In no, yeah, I've should... got like I get like I, I took uh, three weeks and then I get. Two more, so I get five weeks, which I'm fired up about. But four okay. months, bro? Yeah, Has anyone taken crazy. it? Because I there's this whole have. other part of it where it's like, if you actually take the full thing, like, do you start feeling the itch to get back? Or yes, do you toxic also... work culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right, yeah no, right. I'm all for toxic work culture. <laughs> I, that's why we tell Hank never to take a vacation. Well, Hank's going to become a sperm donor just so that he can take four months paternity <laughs> leave, like five times a year. Because I, <laughs> I was on that third week, and it was like, all right, it's I, I, I will be. I, I just am ready to kind of get involved in the NFL yeah. mix again. Yeah. You know? like it's yes. It. It's yes. It. All right. Well, thanks so much, man. Appreciate it. And uh, good luck on all the draft stuff you got going on on Thursday. You guys are awesome. PFT, my condolences to you. I thought what you said at the start of the podcast last week was beautiful and spoke to a lot of people. You guys are awesome. Pete was brought to you by Rocket Money. Do you know right now how much your subscriptions really cost you? Most Americans think that they spend around 80 bucks a month on subscriptions, but the actual total is closer to $200. If you don't know exactly how much you're spending every month, you need rocket money. It's going to save you money. Rising prices could be stressing you out, and if you're looking for ways to cut costs, you need rocket money. Rocket money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Over 80% of people have subscriptions that they forgot about, Chances are you're one of them. Like that Stars app just to watch one show or the free gaming trial that you never actually used? Well, Rocket Money will quickly and easily find those subscriptions for you. And for any that you don't want to pay for anymore, just hit cancel. Rocket Money cancels it for you. It's just that easy. Rocket Money also gives, it helps you manage all your finances in one place and automatically cat categorizes your expenses. So you can easily track your budget in real time and also get alerted if anything looks off. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, saving the average person up to $720 a year. Stop throwing your money away. Cancel those subscriptions. Manage your expenses the easy way. Go to rocketmoney.com slash take. That's rocketmoney.com slash take. All right. We're going to wrap it up with Lottery Ball. I also, Max has a, Max sleptwalk. Max sleptwalk, because I, did you get incepted in sleepwalking? I don't know. We have been talking a lot about sleepwalking in the past couple of weeks, so it was strange that it happened when it did. And what happened? Um, By the way, the Oilers just tied it up 4-4, and the Timberwolves are going to not get swept. So retract what I said about them getting swept. Let's go Wolves. They're back. Max, you sleptwalk? Yeah, uh, it was bad. It was not, not the best situation of sleepwalking. Uh, last night, I woke up. I, I slept at my girlfriend's apartment. Woke up, w went to bed in her bed. Woke up in her roommate's bed with her. Oh, with her roommate. No, Max. Max. No. Max. Wait, Max. did you pee any? Did you pee you anywhere? Cuddling? No, you there, cuddling? there was no peeing. There was no cuddling. But I did wake up. I woke up at eight thirty this morning, and I like looked up. And I was like, this is weird. And am I sleeping? Wait, like, you slept the whole night? The whole night. 
Oh my god! With your, with my girlfriend's roommate. This is oh a great excuse. Oh still have, you still have <laughs> a girlfriend. This is a great excuse, yeah, Max. No, no, it, it actually it it wasn't a big deal at all. So wait, so what happened when you woke up? So I I woke up. And I just I look at the ceiling. I was like, "This is weird." Like I know I slept here, and I I just turned over, and I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> and like luckily she's great. Like we're friends. Shout out Meg. Yes, Meg's, I mean yeah. you sleep in yeah. the same bed. With her. <laughs> and I just I just looked at her. I was like, "What the fuck am I doing in here?" And she's like, "You tell me, brother." <laughs> and Wait, did your girl? Were you able to get back to your bed? Yeah, no, Before I went. she woke up, your girlfriend woke up. No, 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 no. Oh. I, I went immediately. I was like, I just slept in Meg's bed all, <laughs> was, all night. I was guess. she already awake when you no, woke up? No, she was, she was asleep. But I, I mean, I was like, <laughs> that's gotta I, be the worst case scenario that's, yeah. Yeah. That's for her, horrendous. Yeah. Yeah. Meg. But I thought she was gonna be like, she, she was pretty, pretty much on phase. She like stayed asleep the entire time. I was like, what the fuck am I doing in here? She was like, I don't know, and then just like. When when continued sleep. Were you farting? I I was definitely snoring. I like <laughs> he was farting. I was <laughs> probably farting, farting so too. <laughs> did you pee? You farted. So no, much. I did not you pee. pee. I did not pee. That would have that would have oh been. Oh my a god, lot of Max, that's so bad. Yeah, no, that's how bad you're thinking about Hank and the Celtics that you're just the, sleepwalking. The soul patches. The t- two months is. No, yeah. How do you think? How do you think Meg would have felt if she woke up next to a beardless guy with a soul patch? Yeah. Would that have changed anything? <laughs> also, this is so crazy that Max, like, for all the tough talk he's had, you know, when the Sixers went ahead of the Celtics for those couple days and we leaned into it, the the two months is only if you get swept. You clearly think you're going to get swept. Well, I don't know what the, the MVP. <laughs> you, you don't even know what he's like right now. He's gas. I, I tell you one no, thing. It, it, gas is the wrong word. It's out of shape. Gas is the wrong word. You think you you're going to get swept? Fine. I don't think that they're going to get swept. But I am, I am scared. How did you feel about Doc Rivers' comments about the MRI? Do, no, that's Doc. He said that, no, he's, he, no, he's doing little mind games. He wants the Celtics. To, yeah. He wants, Come on. He said it's it was a bad or the MRI. Hawks, or the Hawks. That's a the other bad thing. bad MRI? He said a bad no. MRI? A sprained, a sprained knee is nothing. You he said anything, a bad I could, MRI. I, I could have a sprained knee right now. Yeah, well, yeah. you probably do. You yeah. are an NBA player. <laughs> yeah. Have, what does that prove, dude? I'll sprain my <laughs> knee right now. I swear to God, I'll fucking do I've it. Been here, I've been sitting here producing this whole podcast with a sprained knee. I wouldn't I, say I, anything. My about toe. It. I could have a sprained toe right now, easily. <laughs> So we did the MRI. It just feels like whenever they tell a coach we're going to get an MRI, it doesn't turn out well most of the time. And this one did not. Oh, no, Max. He's, he's The best be part fine. about all this he's is when he got injured, we were tech because Max was at the game. We're like, and Bede's injured. And he's like, no, he's not. You guys are lying. Turns out we were right. Well, Apologize. You, no, you were trying to lie. No. You were. You were no, tra- I said he was injured. And the, you, guys, you guys were just fucking with me that entire game. Turns out we were exactly right. Yeah, not like not really though. This is is going back to the same thing with the UCLA. Like he was injured, he had a bad, he had a sprained knee. This is not the UCLA. He game. had a sprained knee when no, I texted you. No, yeah, no, he literally we were had waiting a, for the MRI. No, no, <laughs> we've already seen the MRI. He literally had a sprained knee when he sprained his knee, and then I texted you. The MRI doesn't sprain his knee. It, but. When you texted me the UCLA thing, we hadn't seen the M. That all I kept saying he was, was wait for the MRI. Achilles. It's the same thing. I don't think you understand how injuries work. When you get injured, you're injured. The MRI just confirms that you were injured. Correct. But he but, was injured. I said he's injured. Yes. And we've already dis- discussed that. And beat is hurt. He's not injured. Right okay. Now. Bad MRI. Not Sounds a bad. bad. It, it, hold- Wait, did Doc say when when he said this time it did not? Was he saying this time it did not deliver bad news like he's yeah, used to? Yeah, I was thinking that too. Good point, PFD. No. Yeah. Say it again. Re- Hank, read the quote again. There was swelling already, which was too early, so we did the MRI. It just feels like whenever they tell a coach we're going to get an MRI, it doesn't turn out well most of the time. And this one did not. So that might be like this one did not turn out badly. Give me this quote. Let me see this quote. That's a tough quote. Doc needs to clean it up. 
He was complaining about some soreness behind the knee, which is always a scary thing. Behind the knee. There was swelling already, which is too early, so we did the MRI. It just feels like whenever they tell a coach we're going to get an MRI, it doesn't turn out well most of the time, and this one did not. Huh. I honestly have no idea. I think it's a bad MRI. I think it's a bad MRI. The fact that we're talking for this long about an MRI makes me believe it's probably not a good MRI. No, he could have stubbed his toe and you guys would have been talking about this for this long. This was an MRI. I mean, he just falls so much. But he does it on purpose. Max, I've already, fact, I've already stop said doing this. that. No, it's better. It's better that he falls. Wait, fact or fiction, would you get an MRI if you weren't hurt? Like a recreational MRI? Just to just check it out? Actually, I would. Uh, just because I'd like to see like what's going on. Like a full body scan. But, out of sight, out of mind. But wait, if he keeps falling and you're like, it's better that he's falling, but he keeps getting hurt, maybe he should try to stop falling? No, the falling is good. The falling is But he keeps getting hurt. But you don't know what it would be like if he. It didn't couldn't fall. be worse than it always getting worse. hurt. It could be worse. He played like basically the whole year this year. The timing of it sucks. I'm not gonna. It deny happens that. every year at this time. I know, and that sucks, and that's unfortunate. But it has like it, everyone's getting hurt. Hurt this playoff. These playoffs, all right. <laughs> why is it? Why is it just Embiid? Oh, Whatever. Oh man. The falling is good. The falling is good. That oh. is the thing. Memes and memes and I were watching a video on it earlier today. Memes back me up. What the one that was like the MVP? This is the MVP. This is disgusting for the league, and it was just a flop compilation. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not a flop. It's he he chooses to fall because it's better for his body. You see, you you wouldn't understand. <laughs> you, don't, you, don't it, you don't get it. You don't get it. You don't. Get it. <laughs> you don't get it. I love this, Hank. Because Max is so flustered, he has no answers, and Hank's just fucking... He's not even doing anything, he's just hes just stating facts, and it just puts him in a tailspin. That's all I ever do. <laughs> that's true, that's what I've been saying. Thank you. I've, I've always said that you just say facts. facts. No looks, just facts. No fiction. Facts. Right. Yeah. Just facts. And, and people keep coming at three. you. Just facts. It's bullshit, 76 for three, yeah. I hope Hank gets a lottery ball today. <laughs> Thank you, Max. Yeah. He's, he's gaslighting. That's not true. Don't let him do that. that that's no, not that was genuine. No, yeah. no, no, it wasn't. That's no, not it wasn't. That was gaslighting. Uh, okay. Hank, have you ever gotten this? Nope. <laughs> I am not rooting for you to get this. I am. Numbers. 69. 17. 20. I can see it right here. 18. 76. 18. Um, One. What has Hank been going with? Ninety-nine. You have been double numbers, fifty-five, ninety-nine. In April, we've also seen seventy-seven twice. So I'll go sixty-six. I feel like this angle of it, Hank, you should get it way more often than you. Did. That's what he thinks. Mm -hmm. It's a hot seat. Twenty-one. Hmm. 21. That's, that's closer than usual, Hank. Yeah, you're kind of close. Four off. You should celebrate that one. Nah. Why not? Nah. Eighth time, time for a second. Eighth time? I should just start guessing 21. We should all should. You think about guessing 21 next time? I nah. won on 21 once. This doesn't count. Come back from base. No, can we make it count? Nope. I hope it's 17 so bad. 35. Mm. Doesn't count. Love All right. Guys. Yeah, we'll see everyone on Wednesday. The Siberian forest cat can survive in temperatures down to 5 degrees Fahrenheit. Love you guys.